slobberin' time. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. Come get some. It's clobbering time! The word is given. Clobberanimo! Teachings! Clobberers! Clobberanimos! Clobberuskis! Clobberoids! Clobberians! Clobologists! And all who clobber, and if you do not clobber yet, perhaps you will one day as soon as you learn to bind the rocks together, guys! Clobber on them all! Yeah, my favorite sound of the week. Hey, 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 greetings. Oh, so glad to be here with you tonight for another episode of Clobber in Times, issue number 476 on YouTube. Uh, 1,476 over the past 15 years, pretty much this week. Yeah, 15 years this week's about. Uh, yeah, this coming week, pretty much. No, it makes March at Happy about 15. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Saturday night, Star Trek, 166. Voyager reviews with the most wonderful first officer in the fleet, my dear friends. And, uh, so good to see you all here tonight. So glad to have you here. Those who are in the chat, those who lurk, those who watch on reruns, we, 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 we really appreciate you all. So uh, we will uh, we will waste little time getting down the beeswax, but first I would love for my wonderful first officer to give us her usual opening words. You have the con, number one. Well, thank you so much, boss. Yeah, it takes me a couple of minutes to get this done, but Not a problem. I, you know, folks, it's just really important that I do it. It's what mm -hmm. I feel in my heart about all of you and what I feel about Clobby, and I think that it needs to be said. Um, hail to the chat. Good evening and welcome to Saturday Night Star Trek on Clobber and Times. It's a mini Star Trek convention every weekend, every Saturday night. You can find us here. Geeks, nerds, Trekkies, Trekkers, Normies. Uh, we're all here talking Trek and it is going to be a great time. Uh, but before we do that, I have some thanks that I that I want to give. 
Uh, first, I want to say thanks to Lord Thoth. I just love you. Thank you for everything you do, you know, on the internet and also behind the scenes for just being such a great friend. Um, you know that I adore you. Like you were just such a kind and wonderful gentleman. Thank you for being my friend. Um, I also want to thank uh, the the great Southern gentleman, Larry Larry. Um, you know, he's Larry Larry. He's a man you should call him twice, perhaps thrice. And it is because he is such an outstanding human being. Larry, thank you for everything you did for Clobby this week in building his viewership and spreading the word that Clobby was on air literally all week long. I love you, Larry. Thank you for everything. Like you're just such a special person. You're such a good guy. And um, there aren't very many gentlemen like you left in this universe. So I just adore you. I also want to wave hello to Eric. Eric, I love you. Thank you for everything. Um, I want to uh, uh, send a special thanks to Chris Persia, not only because Chris Persia is a great friend um, and uh, a wonderful person. I, I adore this man, uh, but also because his dad could use some prayers. His dad is getting a little bit older and um, and he's starting to have those ailments that that uh, make us all very frightened. And, um, you know, it, Chris Persia's dad could use your love and he could use your prayers and your love and your prayers work. So um, if you uh, are somebody who prays, uh, please do that for Chris Persia's father. Um, and if you're not somebody who prays, um, you know, a nice little note or a sentiment in the chat works as well. Um, Chris Persia, I also have to tell you that my husband walked into my office and he saw the beautiful show poster that you made for this evening that you spread all over social media. Um, and the first thing he said is, wow, that's beautiful work. And I said, uh, yeah, that's my buddy, Chris Persia. And, uh, and he, he just wanted me to tell you, uh, how great he thinks your work is. Uh, he just, he was really blown away by tonight's it's amazing, book. amazing, Chris. So thank you for that. Um, I also want to thank my buddy, Gwagnar. Gwagnar! Uh, you are the best. Thank you for all of the memes, for your fantastic friendship. Thank you. I also want to thank West Cagle, who has been out there, um, hitting the streets, telling everybody about, uh, clobbering times about this channel and about our shows. I also want to thank Fiona. Uh, thank you for spreading the word. And of course, Lisa, who um, made the nicest post today about us because she is, you know, an outstanding human being, a beautiful lady inside and out. I also want to wave hello to JT Kirk and Michael Beacom. Thank you for the reviews on Amazon. They are outstanding. I want to send some love to Enigmatic Drop Bear and his family without getting into uh, his personal affairs. And we don't have to do that. I would love it if you would all please just send him love. Send him and his family love and hugs and encouragement and prayers and give him all you got because we are team Enigmatic Drop Bear here. And, um, you know, he, he suffered a whole Hell yeah. Loss this year, and he's battling the big C, and um, and he needs to know that we're on his team. Uh, this is his ship. We are his crew, and we love him very much. I also want to extend that love to Philip Story's mother-in-law. Um, I hope she is feeling better. Um, Philip Story, we are thinking of you. And with that behind us, um, I just want to thank my patrons. Um, you know, I'm not an activist, and I don't write about activism. I'm just a lowly science fiction author. And I just write about science fiction, nothing else. And right now, publishing houses are not interested in that. As a matter of fact, they're advertising on their websites that they're not accepting any materials unless they are about activism or they're written by activists. And so that's pretty heartbreaking. Um, but then, you know, about a year and a half, two years ago, a bunch of people in this community stepped forward and said, we'll be your patrons, we'll be your publishing house, we'll be your corporation. And so here they are, the heroes of my life who are helping me to get my second book published um, and uh, helping me to get the word out there. And I couldn't do it without them, without their readership, without their love and support, their friendship, and of course, um, their patronage. They are outstanding human beings. Larry Larry, Tony Stark, Sean Carter, Penny Lane, Shuta, uh, Wagner, Dave, uh, Chris Persia, Scuba and Leslie Pete. Love you guys. 
Eric Kane is trusty, dusty dog, Kirby, enigmatic drop bear, Michael and Cassandra Beacom. They will be late, but they will be here tonight. Just so you know, they sent me a note. Uh, I believe they're going to be late. Mark D with a C, Maximum Redstone, J.J. Cook, Dadman and the Dadman Clan, Lord and Lady Thoth, and of course, Lance. Um, and whenever I think of Lance, I think this is our very own Porthos. So chuck some cheese in the chat because we have so many pepperonis here tonight. They deserve your love too. Uh, I also want to thank Rob Altus, Tyler, Jeff Wyatt. Thank you, Jeff, Rob Thunderheart, Mazerus, and my buddy, West Kegel. These folks are the finest human beings. And if you like science fiction and you don't like to be told what to think, you don't like to be told what to do, you just want to escape into some science fiction, um, you can buy my stories. Uh, they're on sale at Barnes & Noble because America is an amazing country. And uh, you can also get them all at Amazon worldwide. And uh, I think that's about it. I think I, I think I got everyone. And if I left anyone out, I'm I'm so sorry. But I'm ready. Let's get started. We're gonna have a great night tonight. Um, discussing Voyager, uh, Captain. Let's do yeah. this. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we'll go down to beeswax in short order here. Thank you so much, number one. Let's see here. Um, uh, first of all, oh um. Shoot it up to member chat. Remember, uh, for twenty months. Thank you, buddy. He said, uh, all of Moraine, and we'll do anything for shooters, you know. So, oh, <laughs> there you go, buddy. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. Shooter. All righty, absolutely. So, um, let's do some show notes and shout outs very quickly, folks. Let's see. Where am I? Where were I? Okay. Oh, uh, before we start that, can I just interrupt just for two wags of a puppy's tail? I'm very sorry, boss, but Raymond Feliciano says, you know, Raquel, based on my signing event, sadly, not a lot of people are into science fiction. I only made two sales. Raymond, that's the thing about science fiction, isn't it? I want you to keep your chin up. Don't be discouraged. No. The thing is, is that science fiction is a very teeny, teeny, tiny genre, and it's mostly unprofitable. But, um, you know, those who do read our work are 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 just thrilled. And so um, you're yeah. in a tiny genre, but I want you to keep your chin up and keep writing. Keep, keep writing. Keep it up. And, keep it up, I, buddy. Yeah. And I wish you the, the greatest success yeah. uh, uh, in in uh, with your book. Um, Never get. Never give up, never surrender, dude. That's right. That's right. And thank you for the comment. And I'm so sorry that you're feeling um, discouraged. Don't feel uh, discouraged. I'm sending you a very sisterly punch in the bicep. And uh, just to let you know that uh, you're not done. And, uh, and um, yeah, be encouraged. Yeah, keep, keep on, buddy. Keep on keeping it on, bro. Yes, indeed. Raymond Feliciano, good old friend of the show and the great fan, Sandra. Good to see you both here tonight. Um, let's see. Let's see. Tomorrow night. On, on, on Sunday Night Geekery, please start, you know, end your week in geek on uh, the Great Mark D with the C's channel. Uh, link in the description below. We'll put up the link later. Of course, uh, Sunday Night Geekery, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And there's some eatery involved in that as well. Also, uh, then tomorrow night on the Great J Man channel at 6 Central, 7 Eastern, uh, back to our Legion of Superheroes reviews. Sean and J Man and myself having a great time. Really. Reviewing our lovely, wonderful Legion, man. It's, we're having the best of times right now. We do Legion just on Mondays at Fantastic Four on Fridays. And we're having just, uh, just so much fun. And then there'll be a, I'll do, have Monday night Mark C. Comics Talk. As always, 9 Central. Uh, um, every Monday night. Some comics talk. Sometimes it's just comics topic. Sometimes it's just open talk. I named after our dear departed buddy, Mark C. Who we'll never forget. Wednesday nights, the wild card. All my shows, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, by the way. And then uh, Thursday night, the clubhouse, Blake 7 episodes, uh, Blake 7 reviews, Kolchak, the Night Stalker review, Star Trek comics. We, we do it all with, of course, my wonderful first officer and our great chief engineer, Mark D with a C. So that's a little bit of a show notes there. Tuesdays and Thursday nights can be found over at Midnight Says After Dark with the great Tom Connors and Loki's channel Wednesday nights at the Ponga Round Table, Cowboy Round Table, 7 Central. Now let's shout out our extraordinary Hedges. Um, hang on a sec. Of course, the great Derek K, who's out there, I think, still having fun out there in Vegas at the big meetup, if I'm not mistaken. Shout out to the great Bronze Wrencher. Appreciate you, buddy. Hope you're having a good time. Being safe. 
Yes. Vindicator Ridge of the Great White North, the Great Chris Persia. And uh shout out to your to your father, folks, buddy, and uh we all just uh we're all with you, man, and, and pulling for you and pulling for him. Mm-hmm. So we appreciate all that you do, Chris Persia. Yeah. Love you, buddy. Um the great D Bud Martin, the wrench of iron. Uh Lord Thoth, the god of the wrenches. Avon lives long live the Legion, buddy. J-Man, the Lynch without fear, partner in crime on Earth, B, Legionnaire Extraordinaire, fantastic reviewer, Maddie's Daddy, reader of Lynch Mjolnir, Warren <laughs> Vegas, Super Wrench kal the rascally wrench himself, Fanti Outsidery, Maximum Redstone, our music meister, and the triple bullwinkle wrench, Larry, Larry, Larry. <laughs> Love you, Larry. Yeah. Buddy, let's see who else is up. Did you see uh, Maddie's daddy's uh, message to you earlier in the chat? I did not. Uh, He said that, well, he popped in and he clobbered the like button, but he said that he can't stay, but that he's looking forward to to seeing you. Can't wait. I'll be seeing him next week. I hope I got to touch base with him and see when that will be. In the meantime, folks, uh, the great Mark D with a C will pop in later, we hope, our chief engineer. So let's see, with us tonight so far, though, We've got the great Bubba Doom one. Bubba Doom. Hey, Bubba Doom. Um, shooter. The aforementioned great shooters here. Shooter. FKHC or two zero five two zero zero five. Tim. Tim. Apollo's minion. All right. And the pepperoni. The pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> Grab whatever I can find. Um, let's see. Hike indeed, Larry. Uh, classic comments. What's up, buddy? CC. Uh, me and my monkey. Me and my monkey. Me and my monkey. Uh, the great, the aforementioned great Raymond Feliciano and S- Sandra Feliciano. That is, of course, King Dolphin TV in color. Of course. Their info and let Raymond, please put your book info and everything in in the uh, in the chat for anyone to follow. Please go to their channel and follow it, and go uh, go take a look at his book if you would please. Shout out to our good buddy Raymond and, and Sandra, our buddies and the longtime friends. R R T and Z. Hey hey hey. J T Kirk was a man. He's probably still a man. He is Kirok. He is actually, he's legally Kirog. <laughs> he is legally <laughs> like, Kirog. Legally, he's Kirog. If you go to the state of Michigan and you see a plate that says Kirog, <laughs> I want you to just walk up That's to right. him and yell, Kirog! JT uh, Kirk! Kirog! Uh, Penny, hello, lovely Penny. Oh, and Penny had a request earlier to start the evening, oh, and okay. I'm never going to let my good friend Penny down because I love her. So here you go, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mars Monkey Max MMM. All righty, Monkey Max. Uh, the time scale. Hey, 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 good evening. So good to see you. Hey, lovely Lisa. Lisa, a great aforementioned friend, enigmatic drop bear. He gave bunny the erudite bear. Those are going to yes. be some good reviews tonight. And um, enigmatic drop bear. I'm sending you a hug. Yeah. I'm sending a hug for your whole family. You are a wonderful person, and I and I'm thinking about you. You're in my head, and you're in my heart. Indeedishness, and of course the great Wagner. Wagner. Yeah. And of course our wonderful Princess Fiona. Hey, Princess. Fee fa fo fum. And did you notice she's been working on her Orion um, tan? Yeah, she's green now. She's yep. green. She's working on that tan. She looks great. She's green. She, yeah. It's green. Like, you know us Trek fans like us are, are the green ladies. So. They do, they do, yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, let me, let's uh, let's get a move on, shall we? Um, okay. What is Saturday Night Star Trek? For those who don't know, I want to thank anyone who might be working and anyone who might be uh, uh, oh, um, uh, watching Rob. or download, download or a rewatch. I'm going to get to that in a second. Rob Altus and Tetrarch. Rob. What's up, Tetrarch? Rob, you are such a sweet person. So apathetic, the Tetrarch of apathy. But Rob, 
That is so kind of you. That's very thank kind you so of you. Much. Thank you so much, buddy. Thank you for the super chat. Love he says, this person. He says, hey, Claudia McKell and all the Clabaronis. Prisoner in Wave 2 starts this week. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> I'll get whatever I can afford. I'll be in Taiwan for a while. We'll try to tune in when I can. Oh, my okay. goodness. Okay. They are, they are 15 hours ahead of, oh, P oh my goodness, Pacific Standard okay. Time. I love this group of friends. Well, they love you right back, buddy. We all do. We, do. And we thank you, Rob. Rob Altus, I appreciate the heads up there, brother. Just That's like such gave. a generous, generous yeah. gift, and it's so yeah, thoughtful. It's very generous. Thank you. Sweetheart, do me a favor. Please be careful in Taiwan. I mean, have be fun careful. and enjoy yourself, but please be careful. And, uh, and it's so cool. I can't wait to hear the stories when you get back. Well, yes. Be careful. Be safe there and, and, and have a good time with whatever you're doing there. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait for... Uh, uh, man, I'm so thank you so much. Just like you're the one, you're the reason I was able to get the, the couple of prisoner toys I got last time. Yeah. And whatever I can get, I'm going to try to get a couple of them this time. I can't wait. So thank you, buddy. Thank, I, thank, I thank still you. regret not getting the clamshell yeah. rover. I just couldn't afford it at the time. But if I would have bought when Rob told me to, I, I would have been able to get the clamshell mm. rover. And we, both, we all missed it. <laughs> uh, we, you know, like, Oh, anyway, it, it's great to know that Wave 2 is out. Maybe they'll so, do another one for that. Maybe they'll do another rover. You know, I hope so, because it is the greatest um, yeah. figure, I think. I mean, it that would look so it. sexy on a bookshelf. Anyways. Would love to have it. So, uh, okay, um, again, again, thank you all for lurking. I'm watching it for you here, Saturday Night Star Trek. Back in January, all the way back to the uh, early, the early uh, days of 2021. My wonderful first officer, Raquel, and I embarked upon a fateful mission to review all of real deal Star Trek. What do you mean by that, you may ask? That means 1966 or 2005, all the iterations of uh, that take place in the actual Roddenberry universe uh, of real Star Trek. In other words, you know, the only legit Trek there is, the rest, anything after 2005 is corporate filthy sludge and does not count, so we don't even bother with it we are only going to review the real stuff and we started back then we do four episodes a night generally we started with star trek the original series then we moved on to star trek the animated series the original crew films star trek the next generation the tng films star trek deep space nine and now we are um just now getting into the thick of season six of star trek voyager hello there katie speaking of voyager the biggest Good voyager evening. fan i know katie Good to see you, my dear. I hope you're doing well. There you go. We have, and so we will, uh, what, basically, we will, uh, number one here, we'll read a synopsis of uh, the episode in question. We have four tonight, of course. And then we will talk about it, give our opinions on it. She'll give notes about it. And then I will ask you, my wonderful friends in the chat, if you are so inclined, to give any of uh, your ratings and any views you may have on uh, the episode in question that's ba basically what we do here everyone gets an opinion everyone is hurt everyone gets their opinion read out so now our first episode we're we ready for our first episode of the evening number one red Ree. it is alice doesn't live here anymore i mean it's alice <laughs> yeah alice is season six episode alice five. there we go and uh, it is production code 226 if you're following along in the companion or the celebration. Um, this first aired on October 20th, 1999. I'm going to be reading extemporaneously from a Wikipedia, the user-generated encyclopedia. Uh, I suspect that much of Wikipedia is now GPT chat, so it sucks um, and it's often uh, inaccurate. But, you know, a summary is really nice because if you didn't have a chance to watch the episodes, they jog your memory and then you can jump in and you can give the rating. You can say, oh, yeah, I remember that. So we'll hustle through um, reading it, um, and uh, hopefully it is of some use uh, for us to start the discussion. So let's do that, shall we? I'll be reading, once again, uh, staying copyright compliant uh, uh, from wikipedia.org. The Federation Starship Voyager finds an alien junkyard and trades for supplies with a junk dealer, uh, Abaddon. Ship's pilot Tom Paris discovers a derelict shuttle in the yard and convinces his superiors uh, to let him bring it aboard and restore it 
just as he has been doing with old cars on the holodeck as a hobby. He discovers that the shuttle is equipped with a neural interface. He reads and communicates directly with its pilot's mind. It reads, I'm sorry, and communicates directly with its pilot's mind. Giving it instantaneous maneuverability, he tries out the interface and the ship makes a record of his brain patterns. As time Tom Paris has a brain? Uh, as time goes on, Paris <laughs> becomes more and more obsessive about restoring and caring for his new shuttle, which he has named Alice. Um, it's a ship or is it a shuttle? Well, I guess it's a shuttle. Um, hmm. He can even hear her speaking to him in his mind. His behaviors become more and more strange. He wants to spend time with Alice and no one else. Chief Engineer Bolana Torres is distressed about Paris's obsession. He begins to neglect his appearance and duties, <laughs> duties, looking more <laughs> tired and frantic as time goes on. And he wears a spacesuit designed for use with Alice instead of his Voyager uniform. When power cells from Voyager's backup systems go missing, Torres finds them in the cargo bay where Paris fixes Alice. That's not where he finds, where she finds them. She she actually mm. finds them in, uh, well, on the side of Alice and goes inside. Anyways. Oh, yeah. She, she then sneaks aboard Alice to see what is drawing Paris there so strongly, but the ship springs to life. It traps her inside and shuts off life support. Paris gets right. Taurus out of the shuttle before she is seriously injured, but soon after he loses control of his own behavior. He boards Alice and speeds away from Voyager with her, disappearing from Voyager's sensors. Or as Spock would say, sensors. Uh, Janeway contacts Abaddon to try and learn more about Alice and discovers that Abaddon, too, still struggles with his previous encounters with her. You mean it? From him, they mm. identified that the intelligence behind Alice was trying to head toward a particle fountain, which it called home. <laughs> the fountain that? would destroy the craft and its pilot should it get inside. Voyager arrives <clears throat> in time, but they find they cannot use weapons to stop the ship without harming Paris, his mind still linked to the ship. Torres uses uh, Voyager's neural interface to project herself to Paris and convince him to return to Voyager, allowing tactical officer Tuvok to sever the neural link to Alice. Paris is transported back to Voyager moments before Alice is destroyed in the fountain. And that is all chat GPT. I mean, uh, <laughs> wikipedia.org has to say about Alice. Captain, my captain, mon capitaine, please tell me, what did you think of this episode? Well, there's, uh, by the way, there's um, Zathras, by the way. <gasps> crap, crap, crap. What's up, Zath, buddy? Um, <clears throat> I, I actually enjoyed as aspects of it. I thought it was a pretty interesting concept, the idea of uh, this ship uh, being from an, being very alien and something, uh, you know, if it's going to, if that's going to happen to anybody, let's face it, it's Tom Paris who, you know. Would be susceptible to something like that. that. Kind of too much like the the book Christine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, like I say, I never. I'm if something. I've never been the one. I I might bust bust balls if something is is derivative. At the same time, I'll say something is derivative and still give it credit if it's entertaining, mm -hmm. and, and they do a decent job with it. This yeah. is enough. But is there a similarity to? Yeah, I guess there is. But he's not the the machine. It's not running around. It tried to kill Bellana, which, you know, who could blame it? Kidding! Kidding, kidding. Hey, Parker Luck, by the way. Parker! I mean, who could really blame me? I was actually on the side of the of Alice for that. I'm yeah. just kidding. I, it's just a joke. Come on. Although, you know. And by the way, I sound like a woman when I say this, but her hair, Bellana's hair was so weird. Maybe she she had it coming. But, uh, <laughs> just a joke. She had it coming! Uh, yeah. Uh, but I found it to be, there was some, I have some issues in terms of some of the logistics of it. On the whole, I found it me to too. be a pretty interesting concept. In other words, here, by the way, our boy John Fleck, I always like him. He's how many times has he been in Star Trek? Good lord, you know, the guy, know. the, the, guy, the traitor guy, yes, yeah. And uh, but he always has such a strong presence, yeah, he's whatever a good actor. Yeah. alien he's playing. And I, right. I always enjoy his performances, yeah, he, he's good. <clears throat> so, anyway, I thought of for the most part to be at least watchable and entertaining with them because. You know me, I'm a sucker for something that is at least an intriguing uh, concept. And mm -hmm. this was, 
it wasn't just a haunted car. I mean, it, there was it was a it was a machine that was you know it was a, an alien technology. Now it's very familiar. It's very trekkish in the sense that it's some machine acting you know acting like a, a person that sort of thing. So there's nothing mm -hmm. like it was super original. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was an okay one. My one of my problems was okay there, you know he'd been working on the thing for a long long time until it finally you know takes over and they leave the ship. Well, how in the hell were they able to just double back and five minutes go back to where they were with the trader guy? Yeah, and it's just, there, were they there going were, like two miles an hour? Yeah, and there were other logistical oh yeah, um, yeah the issues as well. And 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 I once again I totally agree with you. But I found it to be mildly at least entertaining. I think that actress is not a very good actress, unfortunately. The play who played Alice doesn't live here anymore. And I think <laughs> Wagner had the right idea by changing it to a different Alice that mm -hmm. Mimi did. <laughs> Yeah. Alice from the Brady Bunch would have been better. Yeah. Uh, but overall, I just thought, again, I didn't find it particularly. I had, it had a lot of flaws, but, you know, I didn't fall asleep. So it's weird. Anyway, yeah, it's uh, not horrible. But I mean, no, I think I read, um, I think I read Christine in like 1984, 1985. Yeah. No, it's, um, a, it's a haunted ship. Yeah, yeah, and so it's so funny because when I brought it up to my husband, he's like, "Oh, I remember that movie." And I'm like, "Yeah, for me, it's a book." Um, so I think I saw the movie and didn't like it much. <laughs> yeah, so I think maybe that's why um why well, I can see so much of Christine yeah. in this but, because see, of course yeah, reading yeah. the book, not seeing the film. So I mean, it's not an entirely original idea, but I mean, oh no, 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 it's still a lot of fun, and got, there's not there's yeah. not a lot of fun to be had on Voyager. So I, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a fun idea. The thing is, I didn't think about Christine to you just missing. I go, oh, yep, yeah, sure, I can see that. Yeah. So yeah, I just thought, I just kind of before now I'm embarrassed that I didn't think about Christine, but I'm going, yeah, it was, a, you know, I think it was a fairly interesting idea. I think that I didn't think that actress was particularly. She's horrible. Compelling at all. But... She's a plank. Yes. You know, I've, I've paddled a canoe <laughs> with a more lively piece of wood. Oh, my goodness. Well, notes. <laughs> um, yes. My notes are, hey, I remember Christine. I think I read it in 1984, 1985. <laughs> um, things start out okay with Abaddon, um, the pack rat. I really, really like uh, the Abaddon character. Of course, I love John Fleck. I think that he is amazing, and I, I have the exact same sentiments as you have. Yeah. Um, in his appearances, he's just wonderful. Uh, I do think it's hysterical. I mean, everyone knows that I start rewatching the whole um, 735 each year, starting on January 1st. And there is one part in this particular episode that always makes me spit laughing. Like if you if you're drinking something, you're going to spit laughing. Um, and that's when Tom goes in and he's speaking to to Chicote about this list of things that he would like and, and he wants the the shuttle included. But Chicote says to him, We have a full complement of shuttles. And so if you've been watching, <laughs> they don't have a yeah. full complement of shuttles. Yeah. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, it's it's like it's a running joke with Voyager fans. Um, where are they getting all <laughs> these shuttles from? Hey, Grim, and hello, Davina Duckworth. Welcome to Clobbering hey, Time. Hey, Davina and Grim. Yeah. I um, see you at many other streams, Davina. Good to have you here. Um, but yes, they've, they've wrecked about a few. Uh, they've crashed a million shuttles. Yeah, so the fact that, that um, Chakotay says that, it's just like, oh, come on, Brian Fuller. I mean, <laughs> isn't there someone here who can write? Um, and uh, Davina Duckworth, please stay, sit tight, please stay, um, because we have a number of intellectuals and academics on hand. One of them is a physicist, uh, so she is a lettered physicist, and she would be happy uh, to take your question. As a matter of fact, she yeah. might even answer your question in her feedback. Our so, science officer, Fee Dona, yeah? Yeah, um, Fee. Uh, Fiona, Princess Fiona, uh, fee fa fo fum. Um, so uh, sit tight. Uh, I know you will enjoy whatever Fee has to say. Um, okay, so more weird Bolana and Tom romance stuff. <laughs> um, Tom is out of uniform and is shouty um, and acting weird again. Um, I hate that this is turning into the same old story with Tom. I find it really super annoying. It's like watching Archie Bunker, only when you watched Archie Bunker, it was funny and enjoyable. Yeah. And without Archie Bunker, um, right. it's, it's just shouting. Anyways, uh, why does the computer take form in the cargo bay? 
and and mm-hmm. how and uh and we wonder to ourselves is is tom hallucinating and and yeah. this is really important because uh several things happen one thing is that alice uh afterwards says that he must be connected physically and so we put the the slurpy straws into his chest and that's how she's able to access him but there's other stuff that happens too right that that makes the whole idea incongruent and that is that that alice uh makes tom a suit how does she make him a suit does she Mm. have a replicator on board um no, she doesn't have a replicator on board. As a matter of fact, Vo- one of the reasons why Voyager is hunted is because everyone wants that replicator technology. So who made the suit? And is this a physical manifestation or is it not? Um, and, and that's where I have problems, logistical problems with this, because they're, they're, the person is who wrote this is riffing off of Christine, but they're trying to turn it into an alien. And because they don't delineate or, yeah. or try to conflate that idea, it, you can tell that it's half-baked, right? Uh, and, and this is in the yeah. form of this neurogenic uh, interface. And the fact that they've brought a ship aboard that has a neurogenic interface, it just makes every viewer, every Trekkie shout out, where's Janeway? Where is Tuvok? Why isn't Tuvok involved here? We have a ship that we have brought on board with a neurogenic interface. And then we have some more shouting and fighting uh, that's super annoying. Uh, my husband, who is a metallurgist, uh, burst out laughing uh, when they called the when Seven of Nine called the the stone in that um, old trophy. That's what it looked like, like an old hockey trophy of Brian Fuller's. Oh, yeah. When he says that that's beryllium. Because uh, beryllium is bronze, it's not a ruby. Mm. So that kind of it. Anyways, um, how does Alice attack Abaddon? This makes no sense. As earlier in the episode, she needs contact. She needs uh, to be able to have the person in the suit with the Seven Eleven Slurpee cups uh, straws going into the person's chest. Um, and then in my <laughs> notes, I just put, so is Alice an alien from the particle fountain or a neurogenic computer program? And this is where the rubber really hits the road here. Um, intelligent people will then immediately ask, okay, what happened here? Was this Stephen King's uh, Christine? Was this some type of a haunting? Uh, is this an alien that is inhabiting, the that has no corporeal form, that is inhabiting this ship? Or is it a neurogenic computer program and if so why would a shuttle want to go inside of a particle fountain knowing that it would be self-deleting so it it is stupid um it's it's a bit of duh because there's no motive there's no motive for the particle fountain alien if that's what you want to call it to kill itself um and that's what happens and it it uh, there's also no motive for a neurogenic computer program uh, to off itself in the particle fountain either. So it makes no sense. Um, and I think it's because, like I said, they started with Stephen King's idea, this idea of Christine. Um, they couldn't mm-hmm. put it too much on the nose because Tom has been working on old cars. And if you've read Christine like I have, everyone in the audience would have been shouting, what is going on? What a ripoff, what a ripoff. So they decided to make it about a shuttle. But when they made it about the shuttle, things came unglued because they introduced the particle fountain and they uh, introduced this idea of a neurogenic computer program. And yet they also want us to believe that it's some type of alien uh, that uh, is inhabiting the shuttle that needs to get back to this particle fountain. And, um, and in the end, it offs itself. So um, there's, there's a whole lot of dumb here, um, but I, I just wish that they would have stuck with the, the Stephen King Christine idea and not made it a neurogenic computer program, just left it mm. as some type of possession by something like uh, the Alien wormhole. Type Alien thing that live yeah. inside of the particle fountain. And so because of that, I'm afraid I have to give it a D. These are unfinished ideas that should have been polished and rectified, uh, ironed out, as it were, uh, in the writer's room. And so that's my uh, that's my review, boss. There you go. Thank you. Well done. By the way, hello there uh, and welcome uh, Nathan Hawk. 
Nathan Hawk, well, nice to see you again. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with a C. I felt you know only because it didn't, you know, I just thought it was mildly entertaining. But JT one, the only thing I can answer something JT brought up in, in, in the chat there was he said if you know if it's good, he said no, he's being nice, but he says, Why would it, you know, if it's trying to create this ultimate woman for you or whatever, why would it create basically he's rating her as a six out of ten? So, well. She's based on something that it pulled out of Tom's mind of some woman he knew at the academy or some kind of force hockey like that. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, anyway, so yeah, I'll give it a C. So, my friends, now, but uh, it is time for you, if you would so care to do, to uh, if you're ready to make your reviews now and your ratings and any words you may have about Alice doesn't live here anymore episode. The word is given. The word is indeed a given. So while uh, you're putting your the review word, in... The word, oh, yeah. the word, the okay. word. That's true. I forgot about that one. Well, I got to find, I have it somewhere. Um, well, it was here. Where are you? Crap. Well, I don't have it. I thought Mark gave it to me. Anyway, it's on another thingy, part of the thing. So um, anyway... While number one is getting those ready, I... Hey, Wes Cagle's here. Hey, Wes. Wes! I, will bring I was us talking some, about you earlier. I'll bring us some uh, Max Redstone Entertainment. Because as for those who do not know, our great uh, music meister, uh, Max Redstone, has for some time now been making limericks about our four episodes that we do each week when he is able to, when he, you know, obviously very kindly and very, he's very talented, of course. So um, we have some limericks for each episode tonight. So this one, while number one's doing that, I'm going to read some limericks, uh, a limerick about uh, this episode, Alice. So here we go. <clears throat> Alice by the great Max Redstone. Yeah. All right. Tom Eugene Paris, I think you have seen is quite the young charmer, but some tips he could glean from his new salvaged shuttle, since without even a rebuttal, he forgets the danger of sticking it into a machine. Wowzer! <laughs> Nicely done there, Maxer. As always, buddy. Uh, greetings, Nemesis. Good to see you there, dude. Yes. All right. Good to see you, Cap. Okay, let's see what we got uh, starred so far. Oh, we have a we have a member chat from uh, the great Max Redstone said Tom Paris is Voyager's helmsman, not the pilot. Well, yeah, he is a pilot though, according to what he says anyway. All right. Um, JT Kirk says uh, C minus. Um, he says, Alice in Chains is just boring. But hey, if I were married to Bay Lawn, ya, yeah, I'd build this <laughs> ship too. Complimenting Neelix as a man of commerce was gross. Oh, yeah. What the hell is what the hell is a particle fountain? <laughs> the I physicist think... is here. Don't worry it... about it. The physicist is going to deal with this. First, well, the physicist had a little bit of rage. So I put up her uh, jokey rage, uh, which is her knee-jerk response. But the intellectual response, the academic response is coming. It will be forthcoming, folks. Please okay. sit tight for some fee fi fo fong. I mean, it's not like a just a fountain with particles <laughs> in it? Okay. All right. RRTNZ. Hello, says, uh, okay, let's see. Voyager does Voyager uh, does Stephen King like creating gradual tension. An old idea reasonably executed requires a lot of suspension of disbelief. But believable, as we know, Tom's a jackass. B minus. You right know, when there. I first watched that, that movie uh, in the 70s with the truck, where we never see the guy, what's that movie called again? With the, the truck, truck. you mean Duel? Duel's one Duel. of the greatest. Yeah. Duel, great movie, yeah. Yeah, like I always thought that that was the same thing. Like oh, that what? was the same idea, right? That that the the truck was haunted. Well, it was the truck was it occupied by evil. It was, a man, it was a man driving it, though. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but it was occupied by evil. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. Uh huh. I got you. 
like Killdozer. All right. Um, <laughs> Wes Cagle says, F. Someone needs to tell Tom that Alice doesn't live here anymore. I did like Tom seeming to have mental issues, though. TNG did the, the, the mental thing better in the episode Frame of Mind. All righty, then. Thank you, Wes Cagle. Zaffir says, F+. Plus. I'm a practical fountain. Oh, I'm a, I guess, a particle fountain. Alice, enter me or whatever. Dude, Zathras, what is wrong with you? Dude, have you make... seen Zathras lately? I have. Well, I've been watching a lot of Babylon 5 again. I was going to say, I send it to you to every Zathras episode on B5. Yes, 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 yes. Indeed, yes, yes. I've been watching a lot of Babylon 5 again. So, so here we go. Baba Doom says C. It was an okay episode. A haiku, Alice, Bilana, like my ex-wife, I weep. For Tom too much. Tom too, too much. Neelixon. Too much Neelixon. Okay. Gotcha. Um, the Max Redstone says, D, if the custom <laughs> spacesuit does not fit, you must have quit, especially this shit. Waggle. <laughs> oh, God, wow, Max, sir. I love you. Thank you, Bubba Doom, uh, for the super chat. I appreciate you. <laughs> Which you kind? He says, "Duel is my favorite comedy." Wow, <laughs> wow. What's your second favorite? Deliverance. Okay. Uh, shooter, shooter says um, A minus. Tom's midlife crisis: trapped on Voyager and trapped with an angry lady who wouldn't want to get away with a who wouldn't want to get away with a charming lady, even if. She weighs over a ton. She didn't look like she was. Oh, you mean the ship. Sorry. Just kidding. Just kidding. I know what you mean. Uh, so they get a ship to rebuild, and Tom hogs the fun to him, uh, him and Harry. I am sure there would be uh, there would be other crew members keen to get in on the restoration. Could be. Could be. How was the doctor able to monitor Tom's brainwaves through multiphasic shields? Convenient how... A cum signal can hack a neurogenic, a neurogenic link, like you said. I think the same thing every single time. Indeed, but if I say stuff like that, people get mad at me. They're like, "You're nitpicking." Yes. Cut it out with the nitpicking. Damn it! Sorry, <laughs> but I'm thinking the same thing as Shuta. <laughs> the ghost in the machine. It works well enough, but they but the ghost in the machine. They worked. It works well enough, but they played their hand too early on Psycho Alice and more on Alice's origins. Would have made this a better episode. Well, yeah. you gave it a a minus, so you liked it enough. Um, Bubba Doom did another one. It was C? It was okay episode. Uh, that's the same one. Uh, I don't know. It went in there twice for some reason. No, oh, maybe he wrote it twice. Okay. Um, Fiona's got some fun for us. This is a she wrote the astrogenic shuttle genic transferred the photogen the psychogenic uh, Christianogenic what Christianogenic Matrix to try to try them <laughs> tritanium agenic, computer agenic, suicide space machine agenic to prevent collapse, copitulation agenic. Oh, copilot. Why'd you do this to me? Because it's funny. Paragenic. Is... Well, then you should have read it. This Blit is what agenic. happens when when you make a physicist angry. And you you think that your ideas can just be like babble, techno babble. And well, so I had to allow the physicist to excise. <laughs> right. Oh, I, I, don't get me wrong. I love that she wrote it, but I'm, I'm sorry. I had to be the victim to have to try to read some of those words online. <laughs> Neurot the Maximander, good evening. Hey, Neurot. Neurot, welcome. Good to see you. Okay, where As were I? Hey, what? sweetheart, how are you? SP4H? Yes, just walk through the door. <laughs> I can't see the uh, chat, so thank you. All right, SP, thank you for being here. Let's see, uh, but her review is, of course, Fiona says, of course the premise is going to be good because they stole it from somebody who was better than them. So giving them credit for an interesting premise is, is, not, is a non-starter like, well, wait a minute, I... I'm just a dumbass, I guess, because I wasn't even thinking of Stephen King. It does not remind me that much of Christine, but when now you mentioned it, yeah, I can see it's 
I if mean, you read it, the book, I think it would have had a bigger well, impact on you. Glad I didn't because I can't. I've read enough uh, Stephen King books that I don't like. Person, I just don't like anything about him. But it's just me. I got gotcha, you. I, I did, gotcha. I did see the movie, but I've read some of his books. I did not read that one. But I, uh, I'm just saying, uh, did it? You know, did it control? I mean, you know, did, did it manifest as a? You know, I mean, was it exactly like it? I mean, maybe fine. But I got to admit, I am deficient. Because I've seen the movie should be enough to make you see the similarity, and I didn't. So bad me for not even thinking about Christine. I don't think the book has anything to do with it. The movie is enough of the plot to where that I probably should have thought, oh, it's like Christine, but I didn't because it's a spaceship. Um, and he's not it's not running around running over a bunch of people or killing a bunch of people either. So, but fair enough that. It kind of gets into a kid's head. So there's that similarity going. I think it's a little thin, but all right. I got to admit, I didn't go there. Well, it did okay. try to kill Bologna. It did try to kill her because she was she was uh, trying to she steal. She got on it, yeah. Yeah, she was trying to. Uh, uh, I've, in fact, I thought of something else. There's something else, and I can't remember the, that, that it reminded me of more than that, where it tried to kill. Uh, like it, There was something. Oh man, I can't remember. That was driving me crazy. Christine would have been the last thing because it was something else I was thinking. There was in some science fiction show where the it tried to kill the, the a woman who was trying to free, you know, free the guy from the influence. And I can't remember what it is now. Damn it, me. Hmm. Anyway, there's one though, right at the tip of my oh, somebody will probably get it. But so yeah, Christine was not even in, would have been in my top five, but granted, I haven't seen the movie in a long time, and as you said, I've not read the book. Yeah, if you read I the book, the then, I, that's, why the it that, but, that's why it cries out to you because when well, in the book, like all you're thinking about, like when you read the book, is wow, it Tom Paris messes around with these um combustion engine cars in the cargo bay. And if this would have been a car, right, oh, everybody would have just had well, that would have been it. Like everybody would have had a fit about it, right? But the minute they turned it into a shuttle, but then they couldn't deliver on the idea. But what yeah. I was saying, I'm sure in the book, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, like in the movie, the car goes on a killing spree in the in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does it do that in the book? Well, this. Because yep. other than her, it trying to be defensive against Bellana, it didn't like run around running over people. And that kind no. Of stuff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I guess that's why. Anyway, neither here nor there. I admit my, my, my fault. Uh, of course, the premise is going to be good because they stole it from somebody. Okay. Like what you stole, yeah. Well, you got me, Fiona. But, but then again, you're the scientist, not me. Uh, let's just bring this alien mind control device on the ship. Let our dumbest officer take it yeah. with it unsupervised. Well, the guy didn't warn them either. He just said something about it you know, later. Oh, well, something about it being haunted. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much a Tuvok modus operandi there. Yeah. Worst security ever. Yeah, he's terrible. Also, never trust a guy named Abaddon. That's a good policy. Uh, why didn't <laughs> why didn't they just uh, call him Satan? Love Fiona. Sure, we'll trust. Sure, sure, we'll trust you. Why not? True, uh, they stole the idea from Christine. They really had no idea what to do with it. Well, that's for sure. Apparently. That I can I can get into. It is a magic. It is a demon. It is an alien life form. We get the magical particle fountain, which is what a white hole. Which is what a white hole from Red Dwarf. I mean, a magic hose. Yeah, <laughs> seven of nine's breath. <laughs> I'm sure they could uh, <clears throat> be quite magical. Well, you, know, you 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 got me there. Um, ba ba ba. One more from. And there better be an addendum or I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, more of Voyager retarbulation. Bobby, you invented the word. I did? Oh, You did. I did. Well, I don't remember that. You did. I would, I would rather give you credit, Fiona. A bonus for trying to kill Bailey and Lona. Bologna, yeah. But my Bologna. When in doubt, add Jinnick. Uh, to yeah. a rated R for you know what? Yes, I'm a, can I call her Fiona Genic from now on? <clears throat> yes, she might get mad at me if I call her Fiona Genic. Um, it, like if I change her name to Fiona Genic, she can get she might not like that. 
Yeah, Abaddon, okay. everyone in the chat, Abaddon is Abaddon. Hebrew and it means and it means like doom or like destruction. So Fee's just making fun of the fact that it's just a little <laughs> too on the nose. Like it's not even yeah, delicate. That's... It's you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Brogu! Hi, Brogu. sweetheart. Hello. Brogu's here. Yes. Brogu from my old hometown, buddy. Okay. Ignore me. Okay, Lisa. Lisa. We have got a lot of reviews tonight. Where's what bees, everybody? Oh well. Lisa says, uh, "C. Poor Harry was jilted. No captain. Uh, no captain proton for you, Harry, because Tom has a thing going on with a chick called Alice, who is jealous, manipulative, and dangerous. Glad, calm, glad, uh, calm and loving Torres saves the day." <laughs> <laughs> the neediestness. I love it when Lisa's sarcastic. <laughs> Katie says, uh, <laughs> Katie, sa Katie says, Alice gives it an A. I really enjoyed this one and watched it more recently than before and never uh, noticed how uh, temperamental Tom was towards Bellana. RDM, um, I guess I'm already, we're only more, did a great job at, uh, oh, I don't, oh, that's Robert Duncan McNeil. I'm sorry. My bad, uh, Katie. Did a great job acting because it was frightful and uh, that's one of. Oh, uh, okay, got you, got your other one here. Hang on, uncomfortable to watch. The manifesting of Alice reminded me of Hal from two thousand one. Stop, Dave. Um, a space Odyssey, uh, a very scary representation of the of the linking of mankind to technology, which we cannot always. Control indeed. Uh, that's that says two of three, Katie. I don't see another one. Could we have uh could it could have been vaporized or something? Um no, I'm it. pretty sure I clicked it. Let me see if you put it a little bit yet. further down. I don't know. See, I'm not seeing it. Weird. I'm I'm only got like seven things starred right now, so oh no, it, maybe it isn't. Hold on, mm, just let me run through it one more time. That was at 9:59. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, it's not up here. Oh, weird. I got Shooter and Gwag after well, she that. Might, she might not have put it up yet. Yeah. Did you oh. have a... Um, did oh, you have a... I, I see it. Yeah, addendum. I love addendums, man. Especially Fiona. Fiona is the only addendum allowed... The only one allowed to do addendums. <laughs> um, well, I don't... Katie... Um, as soon as you put a third one up there, I will take care of it, my dear. Um. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Maybe you didn't put it, if you didn't put it up yet. Yeah, that's cool. It's no big, no hurry. But JT Kirk with um with a member chat of twenty months. He says if Bellana uh, saying Alice to Jolene, I'd uh, I'd up to I'd up it to nine point ten. <laughs> JT Kirk. Nice. Um. Let's see here. The great enigmatic drop bear says C minus. Just waiting for a chance to tell her. How he's feeling? Maybe, uh, maybe get inside. Uh, let's see. Just what? Oh, let's see. What's that there? It's a symbol. Just yeah. waiting uh, for a, a chance. It's a treble clef. He it, it he's indicating that he would like you to sing it, but I'm unfamiliar with the oh. tune. Let me let me read Just it in my head and let me see what the tune is. Over. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure of the tune there. Um, Ed, sorry. Just waiting for a chance to tell her. How he's feeling? Maybe uh, get inside her pa her pants. Uh, Tom will never get used to not living in his man cave with Alice. Why the? Did it have to be Alice? Is that from Alice doesn't live here anymore. That's um, uh, Chipotle actually said they have a full complement of shuttle. He that did. Was, that's the funniest line in all of Voyager. It is uh, like clearly, you spit. <laughs> like a full compliment. Well, you know what? Why remember how they talk about how there's another episode, I think that we saw this week, where they say we need, you know, oh, he told him in that when when he wanted to replicate the parts, says that takes you know takes too much energy to replicate parts and all this other kind of stuff. In the same well, episode. In the same episode. Well, how did you make all those shuttles? Because you crashed about 25 of them so far. But this is why Fiona and I nearly had a brain aneurysm over the course of like Five seasons saying where are all the shuttles going because then we <laughs> arrive at this. 
Uh, I think that was the song. Was that the, is that the theme from Alice? Might be. Could be. Though. Remember the old Alice TV show? Yeah. I do. It was Kiss a movie called Alice. Rip. Yeah, there's an old Alice. It was a, it was based on a movie, and it was a movie called Alice doesn't live here anymore. But anyway, I can't remember the theme. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, clearly no one bothered reviewing these scripts for continuity or anything else for that matter, says E.D. Also, he says, uh, the central idea underpinning the episode was interesting, but in true Voyager style, it was poorly developed. <laughs> Fell up another lost opportunity, T.T. Oh. Um, we have an addenda from Princess Fiona. She says, addendum uh, Abaddon was also the name of Angel of the Bottomless Pit. Mm -hmm. This is like a, the 1960s movie controlled experiment in about seven Outer Limits <laughs> episodes, including the Xanti Misfit. <laughs> I love that episode. Great episode, by the classic. Hey! And if you go chasing a, a rabbit, Genic Rabbits. <laughs> thank you, Fee, thank you Fee it, Genic, Fiona Genic. Sorry. Shooter also said, I think I need to drop my rating to, to a B. These are all good points. Nah, if you yeah, you don't have to. I mean, you're, you can drop it if you want to, but you don't have to. I mean, uh, Katie just responded and uh, she said that she did leave the third one. Hmm. Isn't well, that weird? Yeah, she said, I'll rewrite it though. Okay, please. It, 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 it could have got sometimes they get vaporized, Katie. I guess you probably know that it's happened if to any, us on many occasions. Yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt you, boss. If anyone can see that. Please let me know because it's not on StreamYard side. Uh, I have Katie at 59 minutes past the hour saying uncomfortable to watch two out of three. Then after that, I have nothing from Katie except for JT Kirk. Hiya. So um, folks, if you can see it uh, through YouTube, we can't see it through StreamYard. Yeah. Very weird. Sorry, yeah. Katie. It happens, Katie. I'm sorry about that. We'll be glad to get that one for you. If you Anyway, um, grade D plus says Gwagdar. Sorry, nothing to do with the review, but they mentioned Tom was uh, neglecting his shifts at sick bay. So I have to ask, why after five plus years, haven't they trained any other medics besides Tom? Well, that's a good question. I mean, who do, I don't know who knows why they do anything on the show. They really they're so lazy with continuity that you notice. In other words, back then, to be fair to all TV shows, they weren't. Very, uh, that most TVs were not really, uh, uh you know, um, aware of con not very careful or, or you know, diligent about continuity. But on a show like this that has big fan following, all that other kind of stuff, it's a little bit more important than having continuity on episodic television because it's not, it's trying to be a little bit more than episodic television now, like. The people who write all those soap opera, nighttime soap opera shows, they have to have continuity because they're they're writing one long story and breaking it up. But this one, I mean, this is they do it so much. They're worse. I've seen it worse, even in the the, the way it did it on DS9. I think this has been the worst I've seen it of all the the Trek shows of them forgetting stuff. Anyway. All right, so maybe we should Put it back up there. Bum, 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 bum. I guess we could. I'm going to go ahead and just go to the. Before you do that, could I please uh, take a moment to just pause? Uh, Lisa has tipped me off to something here as I'm I'm scanning the chat, making sure. Oh, good night, Penny. Anything. Yeah, Penny is leaving. And Penny uh, listens to us like she listens to a radio. And that is so, it's such an incredible honor uh, to be a part of her nightly routine. Um, Penny, thank you so much for listening into Clobber and Times, for always supporting us, for being such a great person in the chat. Thank you for being uh, a supporter and, and a great friend. Sleep, sweet lady. Yes, and welcome to someone new we haven't seen before, Common People. Ooh, Common People. Uh, yeah. People. Not... Yeah. I don't believe we've had the pleasure, but thank you for being here. Um, it's always great to, uh, to welcome new uh, friends to the show, so welcome. Um, Simply Steve's here. Hey, buddy. Hey. How's it going? What's Good to up, see man? you. Good to see you, Steve. Okay, let's see. Um, I guess 
Yeah, RRTNZ. I totally agree. I, well, well, I think it's dumb. And what's worse is Harry bumped uglies and could have had that cool um, glowy baby with the with that alien lady who was like a, a scientist and she could have easily have become a medic. She could have easily joined the crew. Not only was she ridiculously hot, but um, she was a, a brilliant, like a, a genius. And um, why didn't we add her to the crew? Why, why, why? Uh, I don't know. You are not chopped liver, uh, uh, Larry Larry. Yeah. You are filet mignon. Yeah, there you go, Larry. Nope. Yeah, you are definitely not that. Um, Fiona says, oh, um, Common is a is a uh, Mr. Brown regular. Well, welcome. And um, also, Star Blazing Wolverine. 68. What a cool I name. Love, I love that name, Star Blazing. Uh, welcome. We have not uh, seen you here before in these parts. And uh, welcome, welcome, sir. That is a cool name. Katie, what are you saying, honey? What are you saying in it? Like if if it if it if it trips up the the algorithm, wow. it'll vaporize you. She said she wrote it out again, boss. Wow. But she got uh, uh, zapped again. Weird. You can send it to me in an, if you can send it to me into a Twitter message. Mm -hmm. If you're still using it, I'll read it. Yep. She's well, getting uh, zapped by by the algorithm. Wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm uh, sorry, Katie. YouTube does that. I don't understand it. But if you want to send it to a uh, to me on Twitch, let me know if you do, and I'll be happy to read that to you. In the meantime, we'll get on to the next episode, and I'll read that next time because that's we got to make some time here. But that's nuts. Wow. So you want to move on to the next one, and we can get that once you um yeah. Let's I'll, do I'll, it. I'll, we'll even interject if we have to. So our next episode is. Riddles, riddle me this, Batman. Yes, yes, yes. Riddles is season six, episode six. It is production 227. If you're following along with the prod codes uh, in the celebration or the companion, this episode first aired on November 3rd, 1999. And I will be reading extemporaneously from uh, wikipedia.org. This is the plot as GPT hey. and several contributors see it. Look who's here, by the Andy. way. Andy! Andy! Andy Masterson! Andy! What's up, buddy? Hi, the sweetheart. Great, How are you? The great maker, Andy Masterson. Okay, I think she sent me uh, one on uh, Tweetwater. I haven't seen it yet, but she said she sent one, so I'll keep an eye out for it. Maybe I'll... Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let me refresh my Twitter here. Okay, and I'll get um, I'll get to work reading this. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't see it yet, uh, Katie. But as soon as you do, as soon as we can break in, we'll. Oh wait, we got it. I got it now. Let's do it real quick. It's only one, two, part three. She says Abaddon reminded me of of JB's fantastic finds, a Midwest commercial, and I made an edit. Oh, you made a uh, you made a video, huh? Oh, okay. Well, we'll uh, I'll sit. I'll put a uh. Oh, I, I will put a link to this video in the chat there, um, Katie. Okay, number one, if you want to go ahead and uh, continue, I'll put this link in the chat. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Princess, it was Harry Kim. Hmm? Here, do you remember when Harry Kim, when when they met up with the, that ship that was made of a bunch of ships that were all linked together? I forget what the episode is. Um, 735 of them and they they copy each other so much and they also recycle names to the point where it's very difficult to memorize all the names of the uh, of the episodes. I know it seems like it's easy to memorize them, but I think that's just because people tend to memorize the iteration of Star Trek that they like. But uh, it's the one where Harry Kim bumps uglies with that gorgeous, gorgeous um, young woman yeah, with the yeah, black yeah. hair and she's a scientist and um, uh, the disease. And yeah. And uh and she's just she's fabulous. I don't know why we didn't keep her. She was drop dead gorgeous. She's like an eight out of ten. She looked very pinup. Like she looked like um well, she was Betty gorgeous. Page yeah, and her. and and she was uh, wasn't she a quasi doctor or a full on doctor? I think she might have been. I Anyways, why didn't we sure. keep her? I want her. Get rid of chicken man. Okay, yeah. let me read wikipedia.org. 
Uh, Tuvok and Neelix have returned from a diplomatic mission. Tuvok scans the Delta Flyer, discovering a cloaking frequency and suffers neurological damage after an attack by an invisible alien. He experiences cognitive impairment, memory loss, personality changes, and a loss of emotional control. With help from the race that they had just met with, Voyager receives a deputy investigator with theories on the uh, terminally cloaked alien rays, allowing Voyager to expose them. Whoever wrote that, you deserve shin kicks. <laughs> Neelix resolves to help Tuvok recover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nathan. Seriously? Nathan, Nathan, you are my favorite person right now because that's exactly what this episode is. Nathan Hawk, you are definitely a hawk. You, you have a good eye because that is exactly... What? What I'm, at, I'm mad about this. Yes, this is Tuvix. Anyway. Hey, Professor Artu's here. Professor Artu. Hey. Um, Neelix resolves to help uh, Tuvok recover. <laughs> In the process, they develop a deep friendship. <laughs> one that Neelix, chicken man, <laughs> has desired. But <laughs> Tuvok has till uh, late denied. Whoever wrote this, shin kicks. You should go in the agony booth and Ron Popelia, you know, set it and forget it. As Tuvok uh, recover, uh, recovery ensues, he's, uh, he slowly is able to recall details of the encounter as well as discover new abilities in himself, such as preparing desserts and enjoying jazz. Yay! <laughs> the information locked in Tuvok's damaged mind is essential to locating the cloaked alien race. Neelix must also work with uh, the conflict of what a uh, Tuvok needs, what Neelix, what Neelix desires in his new friendship, and what the crew of Voyager itself needs out of their formerly expert tactical officer Tuvok. Yes, and of course, it would be Neelix doing that, right? <laughs> Following Captain Janeway's encouragement, Tuvok eventually draws the cloaking frequency in icing on a cake, and the crew is able to produce this frequency <laughs> through the deflector. They oh, expose boy. a cloaked space station and eventually negotiate for details on the weapon used on Tuvok. Tuvok eventually makes a recovery, but appears to still retain a bit of the illogical self he briefly knew. <laughs> So, boss, tell me, what did you think of Riddles? So, first of all, Sean Carter's here. Hey, Sean Carter. Sean Carter from Mars. Good to see you, buddy. Um, uh, this is one of the my primary issues, um, you might say, that I have with the show is they will actually, when they, sometimes they'll do something Oh, they set up a story that's that's multifaceted, and I'll not give a crap about one and and like another part. Of. For example, the the shadow aliens, all that stuff, and then with that the guy, that investigator guy, I kind of like that aspect, that concept. So no, we have to get Tuvix Part Two. We have to get this. Well, you know how I feel about Neelix, but I'm still trying to be fair to the story. Like, is it any good? Even even when Neelix is prominent in it, and it's just it's not. All this Neelix and Tuvok, you know, we get to see Tuvok. I guess act, actors really love how I'm trying to put this because I know we're on YouTube. Actors seem to have this weird thing where they love to play. Uh, they think it's great to stretch their acting chops to play a mentally. I'm trying. How are you supposed to say it? Yeah, um, I know what you're trying to say. You know, I can't say without it without getting yourself into trouble. Right. They like to. They like to play have a, some type of. In Impairment or type yeah, of they wanna, I got it. They all want to be show how awesome sauce they I are. I got it. I got it. They all want to play Rain Man. Yes. They all think that makes them a great actor if they can play a Rain Man because Dustin Hoffman won an act, a rock, uh, an Oscar doing it. Okay. And so, so did uh, what's his dinkle there? Life. Mom always said. Oh Life yeah, Sean, Sean Penn did too, and so did. Uh, yep. Tom, and I Tom Sam. Hanks. Mm -hmm. Tom mm -hmm. Hanks did. So, and uh, didn't that other guy um, win for Talladega Nights as well? I don't know to see that. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> oh, good sorry, uh, I just like making fun of Will Ferrell because I hate him. Yeah, I'm I sorry. I hate him. I can't stand him. So, um, and again, by the way, well, uh, was it Nathan says Tim Russ is a good actor. I mean, yeah, he does a fine job. And it's fine. I mean, it's not that I care about that so much. 
It's just like, I don't think I want to see T Tuvok act like that any more than I want to see Spock act like that. Okay. I don't want to. Yep. Thank God we never had to see an episode where Spock was like that. I get it. The acting. Now, see, it was great, for example, in this side of Paradox, when Spock was acting out of character. Anytime that happens, a character acting out of character for an episode that can be interesting. Uh, but no, Rain Man, I, anyway. It's supposed to be a real cute, touching, you know, friendship story between those two. But I don't like them that much. And that maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's my my prejudice going in. But the whole stuff with the shadow people thing and that guy, I'm like, okay, I like this part better. But every time we leave it, I'm like, I don't care. Why? Why are we I mean, doing this? And yeah. why are they ruining Vulcanians? I mean, Tuvok eats beef burritos. And he's always emotional. <laughs> He's he religious. Does. He's that's yeah. the great thing. He's religious and he eats beef burritos. <sighs> right? They ruined yeah. Volcanians. That they fully ruined Volcanians on this ridiculous show. Yep, some notes. Here are my notes, folks. Why is Neelix assisting the doctor, especially with pharma? He knows pharma. Why does Neelix at the beginning uh, go and get a hypo spray with the exact medicine required for Tuvok. Why? Uh, this is the Neelix episode that I hate, I wrote in my notes. Also, good night, common people. Good night, common people. Thank you for being here. Um, here are my notes, and this is what I actually wrote with a pencil on a piece of paper. Please, God, make it stop. Neelix teaches the doctor how to overcome examination trauma and shock. That scene where Neelix explains to the doctor that that Tuvok is traumatized and and that he's fearful of the instruments. Wow. Like, wow. This is like the time Neelix uh. taught Seven how to swallow. Um, I mean, seriously. And then, of course, I was thinking the same thing you were thinking, but I found a very delicate way to say it. The Vulcan child. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, also, uh, why is there so much close talking? What is going on with all the close talking? <laughs> Everyone needs to be grabbed by their face and pushed <laughs> a full arm's length away close from each talk. other's faces. Look, there is an actual science to this. You are not supposed to be that close to people. It's unnatural to be that close to people. And if you can smell someone's breath, you're too effing close to them. <laughs> a big outlaw, hey. A dagger! Um, and then uh, I wrote it here again. Please, God, please make it stop. And this is the quote. I prefer to stay with Neelix. This is what Tuvok says uh. to Janeway. And Janeway, let's uh. let's remember here, in canon, okay, so this is in the in the Star Trek universe, Janeway has actually been Tuvok's lifelong right. friend they've known each other a long time they've they are tight 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 why 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 did we have tim russ say in a child's voice i prefer to stay with neelix and everyone knows that in, on cute. november 3rd 1999 everyone in star trek hated the chicken man okay everyone hated <laughs> but it was cute. Wait, 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 wait. Are you saying in 1999, uh, everyone felt like this? Draw that man in a chicken suit. <laughs> it's the chicken man! Yeah, it's the chicken man. It's the chicken man. Anyways, um, then we have some horrible acting where Tuvok actually says the following phrase are you are you all ready to puke on yourselves if you if you dry heave if you throw up a little bit in your mouth i will forgive you when tuvok says <laughs> i like smiling <laughs> oh, yeah, I like smiling. I like smiling. <laughs> he does and say i like then, smiling <laughs> and then and then right afterwards he says we're having fun <laughs> <laughs> what this is not a Vulcanian. Anyways, Neelix corrects Janeway to protect Tuvok. Please, God, make it stop. So this is when Neelix says to Janeway, 
You're pushing him, Captain. Please, just let him be. Let him be. He, he He's too traumatized. Really? Neelix tells the Captain that? Get out of here! Um, <laughs> when Tuvok listens to music. Okay, everyone here knows I grew up in a professional band. I was a musician my whole life. Most of my family is, you know, um, it's there. Yeah, and not in a fun way because the music business is not a fun it's not a fun business. Right. When you're grow growing up in the mu in music business, you have, uh, you live in abject poverty. I had an impecunious childhood. So by no means am I bragging about it. But I'm just saying with my musical background that hearing Tuvok, a Vulcanian say about jazz music, and this is a direct quote, it really swings. <laughs> <laughs> it really swings. Oh my what? God. What? Um, <laughs> and then, and then, and then, Tuvok yeah. says, "I want to be able to have fun with you." This is the. This is a Vulcanian. Okay, so this is the Tuvix question again, and that is what is proposed here. Do we want to have a Vulcanian who likes this idiot, this horrible character that? Um, that abandoned his post, that failed to save children, that was a drug addict and a drug dealer, and he did all of these horrible things with his life. And, and we're supposed to want Tuvok to like him. It's so stupid. Uh, and he has brain damage. This isn't about personality. We need to remember that a Vulcanian would be extremely dangerous without the colon R. So he has to be restored. And, and then, so we're proposed this question, should he be restored? We're asked uh, ethically and morally as the audience, if we believe that, that Tuvok, the new Tuvok should be allowed to exist. This is, this is absolutely effing, F-U-C-K-I-N-G, effing ridiculous. A Vulcanian without the colon R would not it would be worse than than chronos on on like endless tequila if we replaced all of the water on chronos with tequila <laughs> that's what it would be like having a volcanian who would not be able to to control their emotions that's what vulcans are like okay extremely violent um this is the Be Nice to Neelix episode because in 1999, everyone hated this character. And this stupid series fully ruined of Vulcanians and allowed the filth going forward to write the stupid SHIT that they did. This is an F for me. Wow. <laughs> uh, well, I got it at a... Listen, did one pop in that I missed this thing? Yeah, I got this one at, at, at a D. Yeah, I just don't. I mean, it's mostly. Like I said, I, I hate when they waste stuff. I mean, I kind of like that investigator dude and some of the stuff with the uh, the shadow people thingy. Why don't you do a story more about that instead of this drivel? They, in fact, that was only used as an excuse so they could have the whole two buck, um, uh, you know, Neelix silliness. And it's just ugh, yuck. Yep. Poo poo. So. All right, my friends, now it is time for you, my dear friends in the audience, in the chat. Please uh, come forward now with your reviews. The word is given. Indeed, the word is given by the great Admiral Kirk to uh, come forth with any ratings and words you may have for the episode Riddles. Riddle me this. And while number one is uh, preparing views, I shall bring us some. Max Redstone Entertainment. As you all know, the great Max Redstone is Clobber and Time's own music meister. And when he is able to, when he's here, he always, for our four episodes a week, he brings us a limerick about each episode. And we have one earlier, and then we have one for Riddles. Here we go. <clears throat> Without further ado, Riddles by Max Redstone, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see here. Something has confused Tuvok very... That's confused. Something has con tu confused Tuvok. Very confused. Uh, maybe he, all right, I'm going to read it again. He wrote it that way, though. Something has confused Tuvok. Very confused. He is uh, acting illogically and is 
easily amused. After having a ball, he remembers it all. Even the fact that Neelix, Neelix deserves to be abused. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that one again, Max, because I was I got confused, confused while you're confused. Something has confused Tuvac, very confused. He is acting illogically and is easily amused. After having a ball, he remembers it all. Even the fact that Neelix deserves to be abused. <laughs> I I botched it horribly, but you did a great job on that, brother. Thanks to the great Maximum Redstone. Okay, let's see what we have up in here. All right, let's go with uh, Brogu from my old hometown. Good to see you, buddy. Um, he says, F, this episode. Simply for the fact that Neelix looks like he's taking advantage. What? What happened? What happened? Okay. Oh, okay. F. Simply for the fact that Neelix looks like he's uh, taking advantage of Tuvok in the photo. Oh, in the photo. Uh, look, and that photo looks uh, Tuvok's facial expression. Please stop, Neelix. Please stop. Now I want to get rid of it. Thank I you. To, I have to mute. I'm crying. Uh, Max Redstone says, <laughs> "Damn, some people can't take you anywhere. Not you, number one. I mean, Brogu." <laughs> Thank you, Brogu. F. Oh. Pass, fail, basis. Uh, big, fat, fail, says uh, Maximum Redstone. Uh, this is a crock of Tuvok. Not a crock of shite. A crock of Tuvok. A crock of shite can at least be used for compost. I may not be a smart man, but I know what shit is. <laughs> Might be a smart man. I, let's do it like Gump. I may not be a smart man, but I know what shit is. <laughs> Thank you. I dig Thank you. You're not helping. <laughs> uh oh. And fun for I, I'm gonna. I, I, don't make me turn this podcast around, cool. Uh, JT I Kirk. Mute. I got mute. Okay, go for it. JT Kirk says A plus plus. I love this episode. I love the manly love between two bucks and TV and Neelix six six. And uh, it's my favorite. I watch it like two or three times a month, and I'll never get tired of it. And I I ship two buck and Neelix. Oh, sorry, it was the uh, Mirror Universe. JT Kirk. <laughs> JT Kirk says F minus. Poking frequency from icing on a cake. Oh. From icing on a cake. Uh, roll out the claboni, please. I noticed that the security on the uh, for, uh, on the Voyager didn't suffer one iota uh, without Tupac <laughs> there to leave them. You want the claboni? You got it, baby. <laughs> crap, 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 crap. Special double feature. Relax, and I strongly <laughs> did pass. Crap. crap. Hey, did I tell you that I hate crap, Neelix crap, and I strongly crap, dislike Cass? Crap, Neelix crap, and I strongly dislike Cass. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to recover from RRTNZ's <laughs> comment in the chat. Oh, that, I don't then. know Listen. if I'll be able to stop. <laughs> did you save it? Did you save it? It can't be read on the air. Just look uh -oh. in the chat. <laughs> okay, where is it? Um, I'll start, but don't read it. Okay. Let's see. I got him. You guys, stop doing that to my first officer. I was about. Oh Jesus Christ! How dare you are? Are you? So hey! All right, let's. Uh, Wes Cagle says God, A. You're so bad. Wes Cagle says A plus 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 plus. My favorite episode. I think this is the greatest show ever made. He says F. Who's writing this crap? Serious question. Was there a writer strike going on at the time? I I don't know. Zathra says A minus. I thought Raquel would would love this episode. I guess I was wrong. Whoa. Oh, right, Zathras. Oh. That's what he thought. Um Katie says B. And it says B minus. So either one. Thank you, Katie. No words. She says that okay. Let's see. 
Lisa says a C. Brain injury is very sad. Tuvok enjoying simpler things, especially the simplest of things like Neelix. Like Neelix. Worried. Yeah, I got you. That's what you said there. What you did there. Worried about the two of them planning a trip to Riza. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tuvix is uh, Tuvix. A bond that will never die, lovers. Oh, my goodness. Lisa, how dare you? <laughs> Wow, I, I mean, people hate this episode worse than I did. I just thought it was this so chat, cute. The chat the chat is on fire. These people are hysterical people. I love them. I Bubba, love our people. We're all, all having fun. Bubba Doom says, D, this episode was written by George Norrie. Oh, my God. After, man, man, not Art, not even Art Bell. George Norrie, wow. After a pizza, that's our parts are all, our parts are all. Send him uh, to the emergency room. Tubix did nothing wrong. Wow. Wow. You and the Tuvix. Okay. RRT and Zed says uh, Voyager forgets the never go full rule. Um, somehow brain damage makes Tuvok more likable. Tim Russ is allowed to act for a bit, but it creates continuity issues. It gives it a C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not very good commentary. I gotta be honest with intelligent, you. intelligent, logical people aren't enjoyable, and they can't have fun. But if they have brain damage, they become likable. It is the oddest messaging. It is the oddest messaging. I wow, it's yeah. really it's it's up there. Like it's in the top ten of what in the he double hockey sticks are you saying? Well, man, I just thought it was kind of lame and a missed opportunity with all its. My, I way underestimated the power of this episode. Uh, Assembly C says F rating, all title, riddled. Uh, Twix part doo doo. What happened to Tuvok? Did he, uh, did he get dropped on his cranium somewhere off camera? That's uh, where the riddle really begins. Chicken Man takes over again. Did you see the episode, dude? I guess he did. Wagner says, uh, an F. Here's a great F. Oh, great. It is a Neelux and Tuvok team up episode. My only notes I wrote for this episode cannot be repeated in this chat. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna strong I'm gonna vibe that you didn't care much for it. I'm just gonna go just gonna go way out on a limb and say that. Enigmatic drop says F. Imagine Neelix as your mental health therapist. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a thought. It certainly explains why Tuvok on the road to insanity, you know, Tuvok was on the road to insanity instead of recovery. Yeah. Uh, speaking of insanity, Narok trades uh, the security of his species for info to save Tuvok. That's true. Sure, that's believable. Not. Not. The, inept the ineptitude of the writing on this show is astounding and insanity inducing. But I'll give, I'm going to give. I want to single out ED for one important thing. Hmm. He's the only person other than me that even mentioned the other stuff going on in the episode. Everybody's just so having so much fun with the Tuvok and um, uh, what's his face, Chicken Man stuff, that they're not even mentioning the stuff that went on with the Shadow People at all. He barely, at least he had mentioned that part. It's Thank because you, you can't you can't focus on the I'm Shadow just, People. I'm just saying because we have Forrest know. Gump. I know, I know. I'm just saying. That he actually mentioned the plot point other than that. That wouldn't have happened without the stuff with the shadow people. Without them. Professor run, R Tuvok, run! Professor R2 <laughs> yeah, says uh, F. Or F minus, maybe. Um, he says invisible alien may have side effects including brain damage, memory loss. Uh, well, he's, he's mentioning it too. Then spontaneous outbursts of inappropriate laughter. Sudden urges to speak in rhyme or sing show tunes. Uh, it's a great way to get killed if you're dealing with a Vulcanian. That'd be a wonderful way to get killed. Just let them have hold of their emotions. They're savage when they when they're not in control of their emotions, and they're far more powerful than human beings. Uncontrollable cravings of beef burritos and Leo and Leola roots too. Temporary belief that you are friends with a chicken man and vivid dreams about sentient marshmallows. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, RT and Z, thank you, uh, Professor R2. RT and Z says uh, to be or not to be minus. <laughs> oh, Professor R2, you had a third one. My apologies. He said, do not take invisible alien 
if you are allergic to chicken, man. I didn't. I thought your other one said two of two. I didn't see the three of three. My bad. I'm just. I'm listexic. Sorry. All right. Um, shooter says D minus. He said I worked it out. Neelix is still around to punish disobedient crew members by sending them on away missions with him. This time, Tuvok, for all the security breaches. <laughs> Bangway is cruel. Uh, two stories wrapped up as one. Never a good way to go about an, an episode. Uh, the brain, uh, the brain, uh, the Dane Bramage story uh, could have been done better, and uh, the investigation was dull. Yes, it was. Okay, so uh, Fiona says. Uh, for five years, Neelix has insisted that Tuvok act contrary to his nature simply because Neelix wants him to. What an absolutely abysmal narcissistic character. He should be in he should be in the brig. Amen. <laughs> I love you. Uh, with, a, with an entire race of space cops, how is the key to finding cloaked aliens trapped in Tuvok dam Tuvok's damaged mind? This is dumb, as stupid as Voyager gets, really. Wow, that's saying something. How can a race of aliens stay perpetually cloaked given the enormous energy requirements we know cloaking requires? Because reasons, that's why. Um, evolution, or at least a thesis, antithesis, synthesis. Uh, but you forgot the word sagenic would dictate if there is a race of cloaked aliens, there would also be a race of aliens able to detect them genic. Just, I want to make sure because you didn't said it enough. Uh, let's see. Let's come up with a way to make Tupac <laughs> act completely out of character because I just don't feel like writing a Vulcan this week. They are boring. Well, they are now, according to them anyway. I want to write full retarmid. Um, Neelix finally has his way over Tupac. Uh, it was hard to watch, and I felt like it should have been a it should have been TVMA. How can anyone not feel violated? Not just uh, the kid, not just kids uh, this time. F minus says Fiona. And she has an addendum. Says addendum again. This episode makes me ask why the doc doesn't have holographic assistance or at least appendages. Uh, he should not need Neelix to hand him anything. No one, sh no one should really. That's for sure. That's exactly. Right. Um, Narada Nax Amanda Bear says I rated an R and not for foul language or nudity. I never understood that uh, the Neelix character or his his species. Talaxian, yeah. Uh, well, what what the hell are they? I don't even remember their name. They're Talaxians. Child adults seem to like them, I guess. Adega Outlaw says, this is one of the relationships that Riker is glad <laughs> that he is not a part of. <laughs> I know, not a review, but I thought it was funny. No, it had to go up good there. One. Yeah, indeed. Are we ready for our next one? Are we done with this riddles? Yeah, let's do it. Moving All on. All righty then. Let's move for oh, our I'm next one, on, folks. Dragon's Teeth is the next episode, folks. There we go. Dragon's Teeth. Chomp, chomp. Just let me get the... Get the Dragon's Teeth. Okay, Dragon's Teeth is Season 6, Episode 7. It's Prod Code 225. It first aired on November 10th, 1999. I'm going to be reading extemporaneously from Wikipedia the user-generated GPT chat <laughs> filled in encyclopedia, <laughs> allegedly. Um, this looks like a term one um, essay for an entry-level um, college class. I don't know why anyone would need to write a, a, a summary this long, but I guess we're, we're going to suffer through it. Saddle up, lock and load. In a city under attack... Gedrin convinces his nervous wife, Jaisa, to enter a status chamber and then enters one himself. RRTNZ sent you a gift, boss. RRTNZ, thank you for the super chat, my dear friend. Appreciate you. He says, if Spock and Sarek are the A-team of the Vulcan species, 
Tuvok wouldn't uh, make a third string. He's the guy who runs water onto the pitch during the timeouts. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> love so it. So bad. So bad. He eats beef burritos and he yeah. and he's religious. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, I, yeah. I I, I, get, I know what you uh, I know what you mean, Fiona. Netflix on purpose. Absolutely. Um, Voyager is caught in a so-called under space corridor. Fiona. Fiona, I'm sorry, Fiona. <laughs> corridor. Our resident physicist, lettered physicist, I do apologize. A vessel of the Turai species helps Voyager re-enter normal space when Captain Catherine Janeway discovers that they have traveled more than 200 light years in a few minutes. She requests that the Turai aid them further. But the Turai or the Turay, I forget what they are. I don't I think care. I think they're them but yeah. Um, insist on wiping Voyager's computer and any information regarding the corridor. When Janeway refuses, the Turay ship attacks and summons reinforcements. Janeway has Voyager land on a nearby planet shrouded in radiation that prevents the Turai from following them. The crew begins repairs while the Turai remain in orbit. Like, does it have to be this long, you know? Uh, yeah, the planet really. contains the remains of a civilization that was destroyed nearly 900 years earlier. Detecting life signs, Janeway, uh, Lieutenant Tuvok, and Seven of Nine discover stasis chambers containing several hundred alien bodies. Seven, without waiting for Janeway's orders, wakes Gedrin. Jaisa's body has decomposed and Gedrin mourns the loss of his wife. Recovering aboard Voyager, Gedrin explains that his race, the Vaudoir, discovered the subspace corridors and were attacked by the other races who wished, who wished to seize them. He and hundreds of the Vard War, along with their weapons and ships, entered stasis in caverns below the planet's surface, anticipating being revived five years later, but their control equipment was apparently damaged. It's a very long sentence, and whoever you are, you need to go take a grammar course. <laughs> Gedrin struggles with how much time has passed. The Vardwar were familiar with Neelix's species, the Talaxians. Neelix recognizes the term Vardwar as an old Talaxian word meaning foolish. Janeway and Gedrin mm -hmm. plan to fight off the Turai and return to the subspace tunnels and proceed to waken the other Vardwar. Commander Chicote is reminded of a Greek myth whereby warriors would rise after their teeth uh, of would rise after the teeth of a defeated dragon were buried in the ground. Oh my God, please help me, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Neelix Seven researched the Fard War in Talaxian folklore and a Borg database, discovering that the Vard War were the aggressors, using their subspace corridors to invade planets, Neelix informs Janeway. Meanwhile, not her regular crew, but the cook. Meanwhile, where's Tuvok? Meanwhile, Voyager's crew are unaware that the Vard War planned to hijack Voyager in order to conquer a new colony for themselves. Gedrin warns Janeway, siding with Voyager's crew against his own people. After the Vard War turn openly hostile, Janeway allies with the Turei, or Turei, uh, mm. Tuvok and Gedrin return to the planet to jam a satellite, allowing the Turei, or Turei, to use it to target the Vard War ships. After Tuvok returns to the ship, Gedrin stays behind to maintain the signal. He is killed when the chamber collapses. Voyager escapes and leaves the sector. They detect that uh, <clears throat> five th 53 Vardwar ships escaped the Turai assault and could threaten them in the future. Seven apologizes for causing a new war by waking Gedrin, but Janeway notes she might have done the same. And whoever you are, we did not need, like, what is this? Like a 1,200 word essay <clears throat> on the <clears throat> summary? <clears throat> a summary, you just have to tell us what happened. You, what you've done here, superfluous and also terrible. <laughs> terrible. It's terrible. Clubby, <laughs> what did you think of Dragon's Teeth? Hey there, Dad Man. Good to see you, buddy. Um, well, it's, I think it's, oh, let me get out of JT Kirk real quick. 
Now, thank you for the super chat, JT. There's two kind, buddy. He says, uh, Boudoir is a better name for the species <laughs> as they were fast asleep when the Voyager found them. What a missed opportunity. You, yeah. my dear friend, uh, JT Kirk, my dear friend, Edgar Allan Poe would have loved you. That that is that is such a great suggestion. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, look, I thought of this some some definitely interesting ideas, but they did a lot of dumb stuff that kind of annoys me. In other words, the and I'm not talking about actual. First of all, you can go and land the ship in a nuclear winter, and I guess the shields and all that stuff. But then they beam down to that. It's fine just to beam down without environmental suits or into into that uh that uh you know where they were all the the the, the people were in the in the stasis chambers or whatever right or the mm -hmm. whatever the cryo chambers or whatever uh it, there, there are a lot of interesting aspects to the story but you know it's one thing to have seven be precipitous and do something that you know set the chain of events in motion which I don't which is kind of crazy kind of that shouldn't have been her call. To open up that thing, she didn't even wait for for Janeway to give her the same way to give her the order because of, they just wanted to write it where someone did something reckless. But then she said she might have did the same thing at the end of the episode, so that's kind of a wash, right? Um, because she maybe may, she may have d did the same thing, but why in the hell did she later after they were you know they released the one guy later? Why did she get take all those other guys, all those other people out of there? Knowing, uh, I mean, they didn't, uh, granted, they didn't, they didn't know much about him at the time. So why are you just releasing all of those, those warriors, not I me, mean, all those, those soldiers and stuff? Seemed a bit reckless if you ask me. Oh, we're talking about Janeway. Okay. No wonder. And yeah. It, they it, created it, their own problem here. Yeah, they did. And, and, and Bangway does this all the time. She's in it, the same way. It's a, again the whole part about that. You know, I liked a lot of the interesting aspects of the story itself, as far as you know that race, you know, turning out to be so far back in time. You know, all the stuff. Even even though I don't like Neil, it's the whole point about him finding out about that race, what they were, and all that kind of back history to the stuff is pretty good. But the the way none of this trouble would have happened if Bangway doesn't again grant them that Seven makes the mistake of. Of releasing the guy, but then she lets everybody else out. Yeah, just me. Anyway, go go on with your notes. Well, I don't have very many notes because <clears throat> I'm just going to be. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to spit it out here. Uh, Janeway's trust is 100% un unbelievable, and so is the takedown of Voyager by a 900 year old tiny vessels. Yes, and um, it's important to mention that we are told time and time again. Over uh, five seasons, five seasons of episodes that the Delta Quadrant does not have the advanced technology uh, that the Alpha Quadrant has. So, um, and 900 year old teeny tiny ships, and they take Voyager down so easily. It's just, it's laughable. Um, also, um, I hate this, this show. Like, I'm, I'm, I just hate it so much sometimes. Janeway has no business landing that ship um, on that in a, planet. In a nuclear winter. In a nuclear in a nuclear winter. Boy, that's hard to say after working all day and then jumping on the podcast. <laughs> um, but it, it's just the thing is, is that it doesn't pass the Kirk test. And so, no. you know, it makes the, the bang way, it makes insane way a less believable less believable character and makes this less believable star trek you you don't even want it to be in the in the star trek family because it makes no sense i mean if you love captain kirk the way that i do it's really about the ship um his first love is the enterprise and he will do anything and everything to save her and and um and it's not just the ship it's the people and it's the idea of the ship. So the people who inhabit the ship, the idea of the ship, and what the ship means for all living things. And Bangway is such a moron that at the, at the outset <laughs> of this show, we're told that she's never landed 
a starship on a planet. And now we're doing it on the regular. Kirk would never do this. Kirk would never do this with this species. He would not wake uh, wake them all up and, and have all of their uh, ships turned on and then figure out what's going on. He would not bring the Enterprise um, into a nuclear winter on a planet, landing it on a planet. And um, there's no science here. I mean, Spock would have found out what they were doing, and that would have been the turning point in, in the episode. Okay, look, Voyager sucks. I'm sorry to say it really does. And <clears throat> it really does suck. But this isn't a good episode. It's not a good episode. But you know what? It's also not a horrible episode. No, there are interesting things in it. Yeah. There are interesting things in it. But the thing is, is that my rating for this episode is completely divorced from my um, fidelity to TOS. Because this is very clearly not Star Trek. This is very clearly science fantasy. It's not science fiction. Um, and it's super annoying um, because it doesn't, it's not, they don't behave like they're in Starfleet. And this doesn't look or feel like Star Trek. It feels like a science fantasy show, but it doesn't feel like Star Trek. So um, it's it's horrible. What, is, what does the Bible say? Some, something along the lines of, you know, it's better to, uh, uh, to to be sipped in your hot or better to be sipped in your cold. But to be lukewarm is to just be spat out or to spit out or forget the scripture. But that's what this is like. It, it's, it's not hot. It's not cold. It's just a lot of meh. And it doesn't feel like Star Trek to me. So I yeah. gave it a C because it's not horrible, but it's just not Star Trek. And Bangway is an imbecile. Yeah, I gave it a C also. You mentioned Kirk. That's a good point. Remember, Kirk, he did free Khan, but nobody else. Because he wasn't a moron. He, you know, he freed Khan to find out, and then Khan had to do, you know, pull all kind of shenanigans to get his people free. He frees this, they free this one guy. They should have waited and waited and waited to find out what the deal is with these people before you free a bunch of, you know, basically a bunch of uh, I don't know, da very dangerous, you know, warriors. In fact, didn't Chakotay even try to say it? How many times yeah. has he said? How many times has he tried to say something and she just ignored it? Yeah, and dragging his teeth. Yeah, and she like he he tells her this this you know about this Greek myth, hoping to to shake her up. It's almost as if there are some folks in the writers' room that realize that many of the people that are making this show are nincompoops, because you know in Space Seed. We, we have a vessel that is from Earth, and we know that it's from Earth. And so we want to know what the heck is going on. What, what's going on? Why is there a Punjabi prince? What, what's happening here? And let's, let's figure out what's, what's happening. Uh, and so Space Seed is something completely different. But what Bangway does here, like a nuclear holocaust, the the planet engulfed in a nuclear winter she lands she lands voyager on the surface and starts awakening these warriors these these people and and their warrior ships it's just nuts it's just nuts yeah yeah it's very so all right my dear friends if you have uh, any uh ratings and any words about uh the episode Dragon's teeth. Well, here we go. The word is given. The word is given. Please uh, put them up there now. Number one, we'll star your uh, reviews. And I will bring us some more Max Redstone Entertainment. Uh, before we do that, I just, um, Mars Monkey Max said a Punjabi prince. Uh, yeah, uh, Khan Nunyan Singh. Khan Nunyan Singh. So yeah. Khan Nunyan Singh. And uh, Singh is actually uh, the, it's like the baptized uh, surname of um, right. of Sikhs. The Sikhs are Punjabi. Yeah. And so um, that's what that character uh, represents. Bacon. And Michael it was Bacon. actually, Gene Roddenberry actually named Khan Nunyan yes. Singh after a fellow that uh, that he served with. I believe he served with him. And he right. lost track of him, and he thought that if he named the character that, that he could somehow reconnect 
uh, with that with that really great friend that he had. Um, and I don't think he ever did, which is actually quite heartbreaking. But yes, Khan Noonien Singh uh, was a, a prince worth millions. Um, and he was obviously genetically altered. But yes, that is the nature of Khan yes. Noonien Singh and Space Seed. Gone! 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 Right. Michael Beacom, somebody. Good to see you. Hope you and Cassandra are doing well. Oh, Beacom's are here. Hello, beautiful people. Yes, hope you had a great night. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Dragon's Teeth by Max Redstone, our limerick. He says, uh, but for the enemy you'd hope to not face, the role of the victim is what they embrace. They become very skilled. At crying, we were almost killed. And almost forget uh, they are the a-holes in space. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Good stuff, buddy. All right, let's see what we have up in here you know, for our reviewees. Um, let's see. One second, let me get these ready. All right. Our wonderful friend Katie. Katie says... Uh, Dragon's Teeth, A, with three exclamation points. <clears throat> One of my favorite moral of the story episodes in which Seven learns a lesson in away mission protocols and the consequences of an action, even though she had well intentions. Kidoki, and uh, she says, the Tere Vadwar War was something I wish Voyager would have revisited as Janeway said, I doubt this is the last time we've seen them. Yeah, she said that. Uh, I have a theory. I have a theory, but won't share until you get to uh, the episode in the game. That would be the final episode. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. Um, Max Redstone says, D, another crack of Neelix. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now you'll have to excuse me. I'm off to do a Vadoir photo shoot. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Brogu from my old hometown says, uh, C minus. He said, I may be wrong. But I do, I may be wrong, but do you think they violated the prime directive? Uh, Starfleet is not to interfere with the development of a culture. They were in a cryo chambers and Seven opened it up without asking. Yes, way wrong. Yep, it was, you know, wasn't their call. Wes Kegel says, but F like minus. Clobby says, Insane way made it worse because insane way started reviving everyone and she helping them get the their ships off the ground. It's like, huh? Huh? She, she's let them all out. I know. I know, Claudia. I know. Unreal. And like I said, there were some interesting aspects to the episode that you could have done without that. Maybe they show up down there and yeah, it's kind of ridiculous him landing on the ship there, but maybe they meet the guy some other way rather than him, him like, uh, you know, something they do accidentally uh, triggers this. Oh, but remember, when they did help Khan out, it's because his, his life support thing was failing because of an yes. automatic system. So they had to save his life. Something like that, I could have understood. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Kegel says, I agree. He says, F, uh, he gives an F. I agree with Claude and Raquel. In the same way, always creates the problem that needs to be resolved. How the heck did she get a command? Her, well, she was never a captain before. I don't even know if she was even a first officer. Maybe she was. I don't know. Uh, has DEI gotten that bad in the future? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so, buddy. Yeah, uh, that's actually, I really like that you just brought that up. Can we just marinate in that for one second? Let's return to that because you've just said something very intelligent and very insightful. You know, uh, whenever we have, whenever we build relationships with these captains who we really love, um, and we and we examine their command and we examine their education. You know, but, uh, Kirk was a walking stack of books. We know he's an intellectual, right? But with uh, with insane way, we we really never get that, do we? We we don't get what you just said. We don't get any background on you know. Let's. Why doesn't she talk about the, the stargazer? Why doesn't she talk about you know when she was number one? We don't get that, and and I think it really affects our bond with that captain. And I love that you just said that, Clobby. That's that's such a good thing to say. It's what? one of the reasons why we don't bond with Bangway because Bangway doesn't. 
Mm. I don't know. It's a very flat character, isn't it? It she's not she's not she's not interesting. We don't know about when her strengths and her weaknesses, where she failed and where she succeeded. And yeah, and you could totally tell that Gene Roddenberry was, you know, involved in TNG. I mean, anyway, it's just characters really need to be dynamic. And I just love that you just brought that up because why don't we hear about when she was working on the Stargazer? Why don't we hear about how she did, you know, two summers on 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 the Equinox or something? What? What? Right. We never hear anything about that. No, we don't. Why? <clears throat> I don't know. You think they would have been heard about it, all the all the other captains talking about that kind of stuff? We do, so, and but isn't this funny? Like because then people are always upset with us because we don't love these captains. But if it's a shallow captain and and it isn't a dynamic captain and 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 we don't get to to know her, this is why right. she becomes Bangway is because she's just Looney Tunes and and there's nothing to endear her. So anyways, I just thought I should say, I love there that you go. said that because it's the reason why we feel the way that we do about her. She's empty headed bang way. Uh, Wag says, uh, grade D. But other people in stasis episode, well, Voyager puts me to sleep. So I guess it makes sense that they are always running into races that are asleep. Waggle. Wag, you bad person, you. RRTNZ says uh, Voyager starts interstellar war and just sails away. <laughs> they revived the damn war. Any, uh, one that was a thousand years dead and they revived it. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Anyone recall something about a prime directive? Nah, who never heard of it? Nah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. That's how the guy, the drinker. Nah, it'll be fine. Kirk Picard would have prevented it. Not uh, not boring, so see. Yeah, it was some... I mean, some of the stuff about... I like some of the bit where we're learning some of the history of what went on. Even as much as I don't like Neil, it's him finding out about him going into the, you know, digging into the history and then learning about stuff that maybe somebody should have done before you, revi re you know, uh, revived a bazillion fighters, maybe, and gave them their fighter ships. Maybe. And leave the leave Voyager up in space, put her in orbit or just outside of orbit, and make the duplicity the 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 struggle. Make the the right. shall we shall we go down to the surface? Should we entertain this? The duplicity should be the 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 nucleus, and it would be on TOS, wouldn't it, uh, Captain? When we'll set one, yes, yes, absolutely. Is this um, JT Kirk says D minus? How dare they do a, a shite ripoff of Space Seed? <laughs> All that's missing is seven of nine leaving with the lizard man in the story. In the story, and she becomes wildly in love. Wouldn't oh god, wouldn't the Genesis fiasco be well known? Uh, I don't know. Bangway, and yeah, you would think, yeah. Bangway and company make all of the same mistakes as was done with the mutants from the SS Botany Bay, except so much worse in every way, like they have never heard of the Genesis planet and Khan. Yeah, that would be part of history by now. Yeah. Buried One would... alive. Buried, Buried alive. alive. Buried alive. <laughs> Professor R2 says, uh, let's see here. Poorly executed, but a pretty interesting idea. Voyager and its oft overestimated captain stumble across an unknown alien race and, per the usual, nearly unleash a malignant threat on the D quad. They pretty much did. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Due to their incompetence, absolutely, Ishness. Seriously, are, are they, are they, um, let's see, are there no Starfleet procedures or directives that? would prevent their stupidity c minus agreed sir okay max redstone you are not allowed to use the low mileage pit woofies quote that's going to be like i'm going to be saying that now for the rest of the week and you know no this, that this happens uh. to me whenever i hear <laughs> that line because it's one of my favorite lines in all of star trek the low you mileage mean, pit woofies you mean maybe that android fella and i can get together and hey son we can go 
uh, find us some low mileage pit wolfies and help them build a memory. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. It's a gooder. Enigmatic drop bear says a D. Oh, look. Uh, magical genic particles in the atmosphere <laughs> that prevent anyone except Voyager from landing. Yeah, sure. Oh, boy. Um, oh, no. Enigmatic drop bear. Genic time. It's off. genic time. Woo. Yeah, well, they beam. I mean, they, they beamed into, into that place without, look, without even environmental suits. Anyway. That's the uh, thing nine, that's crazy about it because of the because of the uh, of nuclear, the nuclear yeah. fallout, like the radiation. Like what I mean, the heck? I, I get that they that they it, it, they had that chamber shut shut off, but I wouldn't trust that. I'd go. Yeah, there, me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Like nine, at least even have the doctor give them like some sort of inoculation. You know what I'm saying? Something. Kathy? Yeah. I mean, I'm uh, your but, first officer. That's the first thing I'm going to say to you, you Captain. Scan, I mean, they could. Or how about a line says, "We've scanned, Captain. Everything is safe to go down there." Didn't even do that. My tricorder readings are saying that we should be all right, but I think everyone should be inoculated anyway. Should I have the doctor send right. down the, a hypo spray? But and you would say to me, yeah. "Yes, number one," and then I would go and <clears> do that for you, Captain. They don't even cover that. They don't even cover their butt in the least by saying. We scanned, Captain. It's, um, it's perfectly safe to beam down into that chamber. Okay. They don't even have that. Not even a line. Anyway. Okay. So he says, he continues, 900 years on and Vadwar's, fan, uh, Vadwar's vanquishers never bothered to visit, never bothered to visit the apparently very technologically advanced Vadwar homeworld, even as an archaeological exercise. Yes, yeah, sure. Another good point, ED. Um, oh, look. A Vadwar satellite conveniently in the planet's atmosphere that is still functioning that they can still functioning that they can use to relay messages and guide Voyager's torpedoes to the terrain. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I love it. Uh insane way authorizes the revival of a substantial 900 year old military force, which uh, which uh Gedrin then betrays, even though somehow. That force had gained the upper hand. Yes, yeah, sure. I'm sensing a pattern. <laughs> <He's> so <laughs> mad. I love love it, it, man. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what a complete and utter load of nonsense. Uh -huh. If this were TNG, there's no way it would be deserving of a D. I know. I agree. I agree. I hear you. It's really in context, isn't it? it it's like you have to latch on to the things that you love about Voyager because it's just so mm. centrifugal to 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 the the heart uh, of of TOS it's just you have to surrender to the science fantasy aspect and then dig around and try and find the gold and and it there's a lot of fool's gold here enigmatic shop there I'm sorry deviousness he also said uh, she doesn't stay in characters she like the rest of them is whatever the episode needs to be needs them to be they are an excellent example of how not now to not develop your characters that mm -hmm. absolutely they're so shooter just said in the in the chat he's just riffing off of what we're talking about and what enigmatic drop is talking about and shoot says yeah why would gedron betray his people so quickly so easily just yep 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 um we'll, we'll, we'll see shooter says c minus he says okay the corridor aliens are are a-holes, but in same ways, uh, response of no, instead of negotiation and capitulation leading to a new enemy that can catch up to them. I can't believe they're not Cardassians. No, no alarm bells when uh, in same way finds out multiple species allied against them and their name means foolish in old Talaxian. Yeah. No, not at all. We'll just revive up. Well, I mean, uh, see, I was actually kind of enjoying the episode in spite of them releasing the guy it, to the point where she re released all those. And I've seen it once before, so it's not like it was a new one to me. But uh, when she, every time when she releases those soldiers, I'm like, that's idiotic. Some good initial ideas, but predictable and dull. Focusing on the corridors would have been better rather than an antagonistic species from the past you got to change that story they've got to write it to where some they is some other way that the threat happens that her just damn yeah, we'll let them out yeah why not i'm sure nothing will go wrong or as the saying goes what could possibly go wrong 
Baba Doom says, F, Mrs. Colombo's School of Diplomacy and Prime Directive Interpretation. <laughs> All righty. Fiona, the wonderful Fiona says, uh, this wasn't terrible in the same way watching the Special Olympics isn't terrible as long as you're not expecting the NBA. By now, I've learned not to expect more from the Voyager. The Voyager? <laughs> under space, uh, under space, subspace, hyperspace, warp space, all the same. So a warp ship basically got stuck in a warp corridor. Oh, no, my boat is stuck in the water. <laughs> What can I do? My boat in water. Help. <laughs> I love hey. you. I think we I think we used to have an under let me see. An underwear space corridor, underwear <laughs> space corridor in in college that was somewhere near the front door of the ladies' dorm. A very popular destination. We should have made a TV show. Wogle. <laughs> Everyone, please welcome looks good to the chat. And and she yells out, Hola! Clobby. Looks good. Oh. Well, uh, you do look good. You're looking good. Looks good. Thank you. Good to see you. And it's good to see you. And I don't think we've seen you here before. So I am honored to have you. And welcome. Popper Times. Okay, the dragon story. How many times have I told them to keep the copy of classic Greek myths away from the Voyager writer's room? You know what happens? It's, it's like <laughs> letting a child play with a gun. <laughs> uh, from TOS to Blake 7 to B5, how many times do we need an iteration of the, oh, I woke up the bad guys myself <laughs> story? <laughs> but we don't usually see, let's wake up all of them up. Yeah. Really? That's true. That's a good point. Very that's good. A very good point. Good point. Uh, Fiona, as always. Um, while it pains me to go light on the episode, go light. The ep was watchable at a C minus. Yes. Yeah, that's a in that's context. A, that's, and that's a high rating thing. for her. It yeah, is. For, it is. And oh, guess yeah. who just walked through the door? Who? Cinema Gulp. Hey, Cinema Gulp. Good to see you. Welcome. Yeah, I totally get that rating uh, fee, and oh you yeah, know that I love I it. I gave it a C, so yeah. No, oh, that's good. I mean. All right, let's see where who is next. Um and Axe Amanda Bear. Good to see you. Always pleasure, pleasure to have you. My friend says C. Even the alien makeup is a muddled uh, middling mixture of traits. Everyone involved in uh, the show at this point is busy spending their money. Slap stuff together and then call it a day. Thank you. And uh we have um the wonderful Lisa. Lisa says, "C, when Neelix, when, when Neelix, the Quadrant Ambassador, <laughs> needs ancient <laughs> linguistics to figure out these people, it's a problem. Uh, Kathy's rush to get home always causes problems. Seven yep. screwed up by opening this can of worms. Yep. Yeah, they all, they screw up a lot, don't they? Oh, thank you, uh, RRT and Z Super Chat." Really appreciate it, my friend. He says, uh, uh, we've all probably lost a job to a Jane Way equals someone who does well in job interviews, but is totally unqualified and covers their screw ups with bluster. Uh, or to quote, and to quote my uh, good buddy Stone Loki, every time we I mention Saturday Night Star Trek on his uh, on his show on Wednesday nights, he goes, he likes his uh, interpretation of uh, or his imitation of Jane Way's. There's coffee in that nebula. <laughs> God. Let's see. Wes Cagle says, we connect with characters because of the struggles they had in the past. Okay. Yeah. Um, RTNZ also said, Janeway should have had a serious military record as a soldier, not a scientist, because her original orders on uh, Voyager were to hunt the Maquis terrorists and capture them, which was, yeah, also... Why does it, uh, we're not going to go back to the caretaker now, but I do think that that always kind of bothered me. I'm like, why are they sending a ship like that after the Maki? You know, anyway. All right. So, um, simply Steve says D plus old title lessons learned, not, 
Uh, didn't Starfleet even make amendments to the charter about finding species in cryostasis to not thaw them out before their time? And same way in seven. Begin uh, begin uh, waking the van the Vajwar. That's me. I think it's Vajwar. A uh, uh, prime directive. Be darned. Indeed. Yeah. Simply. Yeah, buddy. Uh, JD, don't worry about the spelling because they're all made up names. Yes, it's all just made up crap. True. You can't. Yeah, you can't spell check it. S. I mean, JT Kirk Addendum says, um, Addendum the planet they uh, want to drop the boudoir off on. Even sounds like set the Alpha Five. Oh my goodness! Post cataclysm. Uh, post cataclysm. Uh, give me a break. Oh, and a nine hundred year old satellite still in orbit. Get real. Yeah, that's that was interesting. Right? Did it have an anchor? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, here's the great Mark D with the C is here, our chief engineer. Here he says, um, A plus plus plus. The brilliance of Janeway has yet to be equaled in Starfleet. Amazing job by our fearless leader. She was able to see Gedrin's duplicity a mile away and avoided restarting an interstellar conflict. Okay, maybe that didn't happen, so it's really a D. <laughs> but <laughs> this could have this could have been a good episode of Janeway's character was better written. And yeah, I agree. absolutely yeah. Voyager has to land on the planet to avoid the true the Ture ships, which can overwhelm it. But Gedrin's master plan is to steal Voyager so he can eliminate the Ture. Mm, yeah. Uh, P.S. This is a Betazoids. Uh, a Betazoids? Oh, yeah. Betazoid on the ship. Oh, there is a, there, a Betazoid on the ship, Ensign Gerard, unless he was killed off screen. That's right. She, she, she wished she had mm -hmm. a Betazoid, remember? Mm -hmm. That line where she says she wished it was a Betazoid? Yeah. Maybe he did get killed. I don't know. Yeah, I noticed that as well, but it's just like, uh, I don't know. Oops. Oops. Oopsies. Oopsie doopsie. Our, <laughs> press R2 with a uh, member, a member chat. Thank you so much. Does, does Odo do the, boot, the the boudoir neck trick at parties? Yes. <laughs> yes, he does. I don't know. <laughs> Grody. Grody to the max, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, are we done with this one? Yeah, let's put this one to bed. All right. Weird. Night, washing night. our hands of this episode. Next yeah. and final episode of the evening, which we'll start while I go get me some uh, medicine. Okay, you go ahead. Um, it is one small step. One so small step take, is... Take it away, number one. I shall return in a moment. You got it, baby. Uh, one small step is season six, episode eight. It's production code 228 if you're following along in the companion or the celebration. This first aired on November 17th, 1999. And opening up Wikipedia to read the summary, it's like an 800-word essay. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I don't, I don't know why it's like this, but it must stop. Stop the madness! Um, I'm going to read this, but I don't know why. Like, why is it so long? Why? It's just, just a little summary. It's just, and they, they don't even call it summary. They call it plot. I mean... What? What? Voyager encounters a graviton ellipse, a massive body of, su of subspace energy that temporarily leaves subspace and travels through normal space for a time. I don't know how the physicist in the room is going to feel about that. Wait and see. Watch this space. After Seven of Nine provides Voyager with Borg information on how to avoid being harmed by the ellipse, the crew begins scanning it. They recognize it as a similar phenomenon that reportedly consumed the uh, Ares uh, 4, a command module used in Earth's Mars mission in 2032, and its pilot, John Kelly, and that had and that had stranded his two other mission officers on Mars for uh, weeks before they could be rescued. You need to go in the agony booth. Your agonizer, please. The mysterious disappearance of the Ares 4 
all right, Aries 4, has uh, almost caused humans to abandon further space missions, but ultimately would be the precursor for humankind's future exploration of deep space. Further scans detect signs of the Aries 4 within the ellipse and in, in a stable field that acts as an eye of the storm. Plans are made to modify the Delta Flyer with Seven's information to allow it to enter this field and recover the module. Chicote and Paris, history buffs for the Mars mission, quickly volunteer. Captain Catherine Janeway encourages Seven to join them as part of this historic event, even after Seven initially rebuffs the efforts as a worthless exploration mission. This makes no sense. I mean, she's bored. The modifications work as expected, and the crew so soon finds the module nearly in one piece. Voyager detects the ellipse uh, being drawn toward a dark matter asteroid and warns the Delta Flyer to escape before collision. Once again, don't know how the physicist is going to feel about this. Chakotay insists on leaving with the module, despite Seven's concerns that this will slow the flyer down. They are unable to clear uh, the ellipse in time and are caught in a shockwave from the collision. Chakotay is injured with plasma burns and the flyer's shield and engines are knocked offline. Okay, so this is completely inaccurate. They, they were ordered to abandon uh, the, the ship and uh, and escape. They were ordered to, and Chakotay disobeys orders to continue to tow uh, the ship. So yeah. that should be said here. This True. is completely inaccurate. Voyager warns that the flyer has only a few hours to escape before the ellipse returns to subspace where it could be trapped indefinitely. After stabilizing Chakotay, Paris begins effecting repairs, but the flyer's power converters are beyond repair. Bolana suggests salvaging the power converter from the Ares 4 module to bring the flyer back online. Chakotay instructs Seven to go, but asks her to not only collect the part, but to take time to download the data from the module. Seven arrives and powers up the systems. While she's working at removing the power converter, a John Kelly's logs, uh, what? Hmm. John Kelly's logs of the few days he remained alive after being consumed by the ellipse are played out. Wow. Seven begins to uh, come, begins to come to. Seven begins to come to appreciate what Kelly had done. Who wrote this? Continuing to take readings and collect as much information as yeah. could be before his power reserves died. Hopefully that it would be useful to somebody someday. Yeah, whoever wrote this, this is just complete garbage. With little time left to escape, Seven <laughs> spares enough time to download the module logs and instructs Paris to bring Kelly's preserved body to the flyer. They are able to install the power converter on the flyer in time to escape the ellipse with Voyager's help before it returns to subspace. The crew holds a formal memorial service for Kelly to pay their respects. Among others, Seven provides a brief eulogy praising the man's explore, uh, exploratory nature that would eventually lead to Voyager and her own existence. And wow, that was brutal. And you don't really need like 800 words to just give the, the plot summary on Wikipedia. You really don't. You yeah. really don't. You just delete most of that. Boss? No, you don't. You're right. what, what did you think of uh, One Small Step? I do like this one. I find it I'm a little, uh, it's a little sentimental and you could probably, I mean, I guess you could pick it apart if you want, but I really kind of enjoyed it. It's a fun, I mean, it's kind of a, a touching story. Um, there's sort of probably all kinds of things that are illogical in it, I suppose. I think uh, Chakotay has been hanging around with J uh, Jane way too long when he goes, uh, you know, we <laughs> disobey his orders, but you know, he's human. He makes mistakes. Uh, but overall, I've always uh, kind of had a bit of a soft spot for this episode, so I'm probably going to be, yeah, a little bit soft on it. So, notes. Okay, well, I like this episode too. I actually think it's a pretty high quality episode. Um, yeah. I love that uh, Kelly, the astronaut Kelly, mentions Asimov, um, and I also really like the fact that the doctor went to Arrakis. So um, as a book nerd, an academic nerd, I love hearing about Asimov and certainly um, 
Frank Herbert's uh, yeah, Dune. He went to Dune Planet. <laughs> yeah, he went to Arrakis. I wonder <laughs> if he if he um I, I wonder had some spice. Were, I guess they just threw that in there for the fun of it, but yeah. It's uh it's beautiful. I love it. I, I think it's just absolutely wonderful. Illusion. Um, I'm not sure that the picture um inside of the module uh would have made it uh, for that long at that temperature, uh, which is what around minus yeah. 260 degrees Celsius. Uh, so that, that was a little like, huh? Um, I don't like the fact this is the, the, I don't know, like the fourth or the fifth time that we found a body that belongs in the alpha quadrant. Uh, I think it was totally disrespectful to, um, Barry Kelly, uh, at sea. Um, in the adult or in the in the, the quadrant. quadrant, yeah, yeah, I think I, I can see what you're saying. That he uh, shouldn't be in the delta quadrant. He should yeah, be. In I haven't thought quadrant. of that, but I could understand what you mean. Yeah. yeah, he should be. He should be taken home. He is. He has right. changed history because he was one of the first people to discover, you know, alien life, and and you know what I mean. Anyway, yeah, I that's just a think, good point. I didn't think about that, but that's a yeah. Good it just sort of, well, for me, it just sort of pissed me off because it, whenever you have a military person or a police officer or somebody who's given their life uh, for all of mankind, I, I think that they should be brought home and there should be like a beautiful memorial for that person. And we should have arranged for that. I mean, we can, we can do that, right? If, if seven can have seven, six, seven alcoves, even though there's only one Borg on board, I'm pretty sure we could have arranged a, a, a a proper burial for Kelly. Um, I think the the uh, ending is melodramatic, almost insufferable. Um, it's it's just absolutely horrid. Uh, it's right up there with the, with the uh, Denise Crosby burial. Absolutely terrible. Um, why did they have seven say all that crap? Just crap, crap, crap. Um, I like this one, but we didn't need Chakotay to disobey orders, and it does have flaws. Uh, mm -hmm. This had the potential to definitely be in the A category, but it cannot because of these flaws. Um, I did not like the way that they treated the, this person. That, this is a, a member of the honored dead. This this is a person who is now a, a, a huge part of, of uh, humankind's history, mankind's history. And I did not like the melodramatic ending, and I did not like Chakotay disobeying orders. Um, I give it a B minus. I got you. No, I understand that. I think if I enjoyed the sentiment of it, I do. I never thought of it, but I do think you're right. They probably should have brought it back to the to the Alpha Quadrant. That yeah. said, I'll give it a B plus. I, I think I found it to be uh, entertaining and, and again touching and heartwarming. And anytime they do something like that, I guess I kind of like that kind of stuff when they're talking about space travel. You notice, by the way, did you notice the uh, the reference to Buck Mackay? They mentioned they're talking about the World Series now. You know, uh, Cisco's favorite uh, baseball player. Yeah, and, it's uh, very but I, cute. But that was cute. But I, I, he was talking about the Yankees and someone else. Who'd Bakai play for? Uh, he didn't play for the Yankees, did he? Anyone ever remember who he played for? Somebody will remember. But anyway, not, they were talking about the World Series. He never got to find out he won it in one game, you know, won the World Series. But uh, yeah, he, he Phil Morris, of course, is terrific, as always. You know, he's always oh, he's, good. Always, he's beautiful. I always and like him. Yeah, and uh, I mean, not and, Phil, that's Greg Morris, right? It's Greg, sorry. Uh, no, that's Phil, that's Phil. Greg's no, the it's Phil. That's yeah, Phil Greg's Morris. the father, right? Greg's the father from uh, Mission Impossible. His, his pappy is Greg Morris, he's Phil, sorry. Yeah, that's Phil, bad. not only is Phil handsome, but he is a wonderful actor and he is yeah, incredibly I like charming. And I think he rescues the whole episode here. This has a real enterprise feel to it, yes. uh, that makes you feel inspired again. Wonder if, if, if Zephram Cochran inspires you and that sort of, um, London you know, King. we're on the cusp feel, mm -hmm. yeah, you get that from Lieutenant John Kelly and you get that because of, of Philip Morris. He, it, Phil does such a great job here and it feels inspired. It feels beautiful. It feels fresh. It feels, um, yeah, it feels Morris wonderful. Yeah. He and his pappy. His pappy was, of course, on uh, Mission Impossible. So, mm -hmm. yeah, good actor. Uh, yeah, so a, a cool episode, a, uh, an enjoyable one for sure. I really like it. I guess, um, you know, I'll give any kind of pass to something that's entertaining and, and has a good, nice heart to it, a lot of heart to it. Like I said, I must admit, I didn't think about the whole them just, uh, you know, them doing that for his, 
you know, they should have brought him back to the, to the Alpha Quadrant, but they wanted to have that big dramatic funeral thing is why they did that. But they still should have kept his body. Um, yeah. They could have had a ceremony without, you know. So, yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Didn't think of it, but still, I think I, I give it a B plus. I found it pretty pretty enjoyable. I got gotcha. close to Close to A territory. Yeah. So now at my friend's. Uh, please come forth with any of your um, ratings and words you may have about one small step because the word is given. And while number one is starring those, I will bring us some more Max Redstone entertainment. All right, one small step by the great Max Redstone, our our limerick for this episode. Let's see, space travel. It seems it can be quite harried. Even though the sky and the stars, we are carried. Nope. I'm going to start over. Space travel, it seems, can be quite harried. Even though to the sky and the stars, we are carried. Yet infinite in infinite ways, it still leads to delays. Since it now takes three centuries to get buried. Whoa. Uh, sorry, stumbling over there, but thank you, Max. Nice. Boss turn. man. A Turing, Turing machine walks through the door. Hey, Turing machine and Joe Dog are both it's here. So, oh, and Joe Dog's here? I miss Joe Dog. Good so evening, he, he, he Turing machine after. and, and, and Joe Dog. Woo, woo. Good to see you both. Thank you for being here. And uh, let's see um, what we got going on. Well, uh, sorry. I step down. Okay, let's see what we have in our uh, reviews. Um, start off. Katie, Katie. Hey, Katie. Katie says, one small step. A plus, 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 plus. Five pluses. She says, one of my top five episodes of Voyager. What a beautifully written, thoughtful, and thought-provoking episode. The humanity in this episode makes it worthy to be shown in school. There you go. Um, starting with seven not interested in history, with uh, the push of Janeway and eventually Chakotay, Seven begins to grasp and un and understand history, opposed to opposed to consuming it. Uh, uh, history opposed to consuming it. Understanding history opposed to consuming it. Sorry, it's, uh, Katie. Uh, the flashbacks of Lieutenant Kelly, you know, were so uh, poignant, and the actor Phil Morris was excellent. I mean, him and uh, I, oh, I met him at oh, at really cool at a uh, at a uh, Star Trek Las Vegas. Very kind gentleman. Oh, cool. Uh, the scenes between Chicote and Seven were darling ballerina Seven. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's meant she's going to be a ballerina. There you go. And really began their, like you, a ballerina, Katie, began their um, relationship. Chicote's smile, uh, too, when he admitted, when she admitted her childhood dream, the closing scene of Seven recovering the body, NASA theme playing, and funeral was top quality. True sacrifice of exploration. I have so much love for this episode. Well, thank you so much, Katie. I have so much love for you hanging out with us, and good to see you. And appreciate your review. Let's see. Um, oops, hit right. Max Redstone says B minus. Good concept, poorly executed. That's one small crock for a man, one giant crock for mankind. Paging <laughs> Phil Philip Morris. Oh, oh, B B minus means you didn't totally hate it. There you go. Um, Brogu says actor Phil Morris was in this episode, and I loved his father. Mm -hmm. Yep, he played Barney on Mission Impossible, uh, who also was an actor in the original Mission Impossible TV series. That would be correct, Brogu. So uh, for that reason alone, I will give it an A. <laughs> That's a good yeah. enough reason. Whatever yeah. reason you want, buddy, it's fine with me. Yeah, I love that. Any reasons anybody has for anything is fine with me. Um, West Cale says, N.A., no rating. Uh, Voyager encounters a, gravi a graviton ellipse, a massive body of subspace energy that temporarily leaves subspace and travels through normal space for a time. WTF, I'm done. Nope, I'm out. Wow, okay. I didn't know you felt that strongly about graviton ellipses. You didn't say Jenic, though. So, I'll have, to, I'll have to call you some points for that, buddy. Thank you, West. <laughs> I love non-reviews. That's fantastic. 
Wes, you crack me up, man. I think. Or I would say like uh, Andy. I love Andy, Wes. I love Wes. I'm gonna say like Andy Taylor used to say to Barney Fife, "You mean everything." You know that. J.T. Kirk was an man, says, and now he's a key rock, says B+. The episode is just too sentimental for my taste, but it is a well-done It is well done episode. I would have loved to see more attention paid to all of those elements and substances that were undiscovered. Yeah, I wanted to see. That's one thing that got me as well, J.T., when they're inside of the thing and they're, they're like, you can see some all these different things out there. I know it would have yeah. been tough, I guess. I wanted to see out of that window. Yeah. You know what I mean? At least take some scans. Like, do right. you remember the, the silver goo people? They don't take scans. They don't, they scan, don't scan for scan anything. Things. I would like to have seen a couple of shots outside, seeing what kind of cool stuff was out there. Yeah, but yeah. And and they nice. should have a thirst for knowledge and, and an insatiable curiosity. I mean, look at I all think- the, the trouble spots gets us into right. because he has this insatiable curiosity and of course we're we're right there yep. with him right yeah i mean i think they were just too cheap to make stuff to show <laughs> exactly exactly uh, professor r2 says this episode felt like the human interest stories that always interrupt coverage of the olympics interesting but not what i came here for uh fair enough fair enough um, where we at? Oh, shooter says, uh, a minus. Okay, researching an anomaly, a risky attempt for a recovery of a historic relic. These are good ideas and not half half badly done. Feels like Star Trek. There you go. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Bangway's speech about becoming the past uh, felt flat. Fell flat. Excuse me. Uh, surely the writers could make. A better speech. Mm, well, there there are Voyager writers, dude. So are you sure about that? The ah, sorry, I mean, a little presumptuous on your part, pal. The eulogy was better, but not by much. Well, again, they're Voyager writers, and right, I use the term writers, you know, way loosely. They were probably uh, working on things like Friends and Nine O Two One O and other stuff too. Uh, not bad. I not bad. I don't know about the Chipotle Seven drama. Not bad. I don't know about the Chipotle Seven drama. Not necessary, but I guess it didn't hurt so much. Still a solid entry, but why not take his body home? I don't get that. No, nah, I'm I'm with you in uh, number one on that one. Good point. Yeah, I just when <clears throat> when somebody has served their country and served all of mankind, like I. Uh, and right. it would be different because it. if we were in the Alpha Quadrant, I think, okay, bury him at sea. But I, even then, I don't think so. Let, let's get him home and let's get a memorial and, and let's let his family know what, what truly happened to him. And, um, yeah, anyway. Right. I absolutely get that. And Jill is here. Hey, Boston. Jill. Hey, Jill. Good to see you. Let's see. Um... All right, Jilly. We got simply Steve says C minus rating simply for the shade uh, simply for the shades of Kirk being buried under rocks by Pihard on Viridian three instead of being kept aboard Voyager till they got back to the uh, Alpha Quadrant in, in ST Generations movie. Such disrespect for him. Yeah, I didn't like that either. A lot of things I didn't like about that. Uh, Bring the heroes of- home. Bring, Bring the, heroes, the home. heroes home. We yes. want our heroes. Yes. I mean, you could say, oh, well, they shot Spock off to the Genesis planet, but th- that had to happen because we, we needed a... You know, although, look, Cyrus was pissed at them not taking the body home to Vulcan, but... This is what I'm saying. Yeah. Bring the body home. If they brought Spock home, we would never have Spock alive, though. So we it's needed true, a it's true. So I'm glad Kirk screwed up on that one. Um, RRT and Zed... One small one small step review. Okay. Has it been has it been all about seven for a few apps? So this app is like Brigadoon, but Techno Babble instead of signing uh of sign st- techno babble instead of uh singing, sorry. Ridiculous that 24th century, excuse me, 21st century and 24th century uh text compatible. A drag, so a drag, so D, a D from RR. Gotcha. It was a drag. You said, oh, I gotcha. 
he uh, couldn't show. he couldn't reconcile the fact that they would cannibalize apart from such a a distant from the distant uh, yes, past. Yes, yes, and yeah, it. So it he couldn't reconcile silly. that. So that's it, be, because right. of that, it broke the episode for him. And Bossman, you need yes. to know Wasn't that Bruce Lombardo of Dick's Division is here. Bruce. Good evening, Bruce. Thank you for joining us. What is up? Hello, Bruce. Hello, Bruce. Hello, Bruce. And and of course. Um, Mm -hmm. He's going to make Zathras happy by walking through the door. And the first thing he says is, did we start the Babylon 5 reviews yet? No, we have not. Sorry. We love you, Bruce. Thank you so much for However, being here. However, I have been watching it again for the zillionth time. I've decided I needed some more Babylon 5 in my life because it had been a couple of like, years or so, and about two years maybe or three, and it was time to go back because I love it. John Carter. One of 11. Dude, don't make me come over there. Just kidding. You better not have no 11. <laughs> he says, uh, given an A despite the flaws, this uh, this had an honest and pure Trek theme, optimism, hope, dedication, kindness, honor, and reverence. All right, Sean. Thank you, buddy. Let's see. Um, Touring Machine says, the one time I watched all four Voyager episodes for the week, and I get a call to pick a relative up nearly 200 miles away. I just had oh. to put that up. I know it's not a, a review, know, but, but Turing okay. finally had the time to watch all the episodes, was mm. ready and raring to go, and then got called uh, away. So I just wanted everyone to know. And Turing, you know we love you. If you want to slip your at least your rating, like A, B, C, whatever, for each one real quick, we have no problem looking at that for you. Uh, Fiona says... And if you want to put it, you still time to put a review up of this episode if, if you feel like it. But no, no pressure. Just glad to have you here. Fiona says, Anomaly Time. We haven't seen one in a while. A whole episode, right or two, maybe. Uh, this anomaly comes in the form of a source of gravitons with no apparent or, or originate. Origination? Origination. Subspace energy with no source. Okay. Dope. You really have to get past the giant uh, suppository of contrivance that sets this up, that sets uh, up the situation, excuse me. If the ship is inside the magic ovoid, how did the two guys survive on Mars for weeks? I don't know. A magic Xerox ovoid? Yes, that's it. I knew I, I, knew I was forgetting something. Did the ship get duplicated? Of course. Why not? Again? Absolutely. How can two, uh, 2020, 2032 tech be any way useful to to current power requirements? You, that that was... Never mind. Yeah, I, yeah, How yeah. to piss off a physicist. But there is something here when when, when get past the magic stupidity. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yes. Uh, the idea of a lone astronaut continuing to work in the face of certain uh, death for the benefit of posterity mm -hmm. is very powerful. Going all the way back to 2001 and earlier. Yeah. Nadidiousness. A, a few nerd name drops also. What's yes. really sad is a real science fiction writer could have easily fixed this and made it into... An iconic episode, but no Voyager stupidity abounds. I hear you. Uh, hang on. One of the few Voyager eps that makes me more sad than angry. Sad at the lost potential. Obi-Wan nostalgia has uh, power over the weak-minded. C, but really a D, but for the distractions of sentiment. I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, Totally get you there, Fee. I'm right there on the same page with you. Um, Lisa says, A, she gives it an A, seven push to look at the importance of exploration. His exploration history is more growth for the character, for the character, uh, to acknowledge the humanity of Lieutenant Kelly and to transport him to Voyager must not have been, um, Irrelevant to seven. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Absolutely, Ishness. 
boss man um, yes i have to interject very quickly because our great friend brogu is leaving for the evening and he wants to everyone oh. to know that he's saying good night uh we just love you so much brogu thank you so much for being here thank you for your company and your wonderful comments and your wonderful conversations um and he's yeah. telling everyone to enjoy the rest of their weekend and always remember clover and times this is the way Brogu, we love you, honey. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Good night. Good night, Brogu. Thank and you. And Philip Brogu. Story just walked through the door. Time. Hey, Philip. Philip. All right. How you doing? We were talking about you earlier. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, good to see you, Philip. Thank you for being here. Okay, um, Baba Doom one. Our buddy says C. Chipotle decides to defy orders and cause the away team to come to calamity. The guest star was great. He pulled off a good performance. I, too, thought the burial at sea was a mistake. There you go. Yeah, bring my heroes yeah. home. And Like, if these are our loved ones, these are our heroes. These are people who gave their lives for all mankind. Like, I'm, and not only that, like, if I'm the family, like, that's one thing that I don't like about this show, Bubba Doom, is that they keep having all of these funerals, and they don't involve anyone's family members, they don't get anyone involved, and they just bury people at sea. It doesn't make sense. And I just, I don't like it. I, I don't. But I, I don't know, I guess, because the way I grew up in the 70s, I just have this, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't want people to be desecrated. I don't want that someone's, to, like, memories, the memory of someone I think is really important. And, and, I, and I think that it, it's important to involve the family and, and to lay somebody to rest in the way they wanted and, and for the family to be informed and to be a part of it. So, yeah, I, I don't like the, that because that's, like, it happens a lot on this show. Like it, it keeps happening. And it sort of makes you think, you know, like, what do they really think about death? What do they really think about family, about honor, about loyalty, about, you know, thanking your heroes? So I, I don't know. I have a bone to pick with the show about that. Narada Nax Amanda measures B plus. I wonder if this episode inspired Farscape. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so, but you never know. Okay. Uh, Gwagnar. Says uh, C plus. It was a decent enough episode. There are a bunch of things that bug me, but I can overlook them as they don't take me out of the episode that much. Thank you, Gwag. Um, Jill, Jilly Jill says, uh, "Hey, did Ed uh, give him a review yet? I guess he may, may have had to run or something." No, no, he he wouldn't leave without saying goodbye. It's just coming in now, boss. Oh, cool, cool. I just wonder. We don't, we don't like. Okay, uh, Jill says, um, "Let's see." She gives it an A. It says, while having Voyager encounter a spacecraft from our current near future in the Delta Quadrant is far-fetched, I enjoyed connecting the meaning of exploration in Star Trek with the past. While exploration is dangerous, uh, exploration is dangerous, it is worth the trouble for the benefit of humanity. While Zephyrin Cochran, uh, well, Cochran will uh, finally achieve a few days, you know, which, I'm sorry, which Zephyr and Cochran finally achieve a few decades after this astronaut. Risk is our business, indeed. Kirk returns tomorrow. It's odd uh, they would walk back Seven's uh, character that Seven would uh, consider history irrelevant when ignoring its causes to repeat. She lear She's learned the meaning of sentimentality from the crew already. Yeah, I understand what you're saying about that. Absolutely. While I'm not sure I believe parts from the Mars orbiter can really repair the Delta Flyer, nor whether the data would be in such perfect condition, but I, I still enjoyed the teamwork involved. Thank you, Jill. Right there on the same page with you, RRTNZ. It says... Them using a part uh, from the uh, from the twenty first century ship to fix the part of Voyager, it was Delta Flyer, but I hear you, is like taking a part from a Model T Ford and using it to fix the transmission of a twenty twenty four Ford Falcon. Yeah, do they make Ford Falcons now? But I, I don't know. Wow, 
I have no idea. And that is incredibly kind of you to say Philip's story. I feel the exact same way about you. And uh, it is such a pleasure to have you here tonight. Indeed, it's just good to have you. Addendum from Princess Fiona. She says, they actually bothered to scan the anomaly this time and actually had a reason not to go around. Unlike <laughs> the, mis the mystery under underwear corridor last episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Enigmatic Drop Bear says he gives it a C, a.k.a. the Vagrant Graviton Ellipse Collector from Subspace on the hunt for its next acquisition. Juxtaposing the urgency to escape the ellipse with indulging the Ares logs was borderline schizophrenic. They were trying to simultaneously juggle the pacing of two very different subplots. Hmm. Hard to believe it was uh, deliberate. It was deliberate using seven to contrast the ellipse's mindless method of relentless acquisition with the Borg's more strategic methods. Hmm. Such use of irony is unusual for Voyager. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, ED. I'm so there with you. And our final review of the night, the great Mark D with the C Chief Engineer. Come hang out with us if you can, buddy. If not, we understand. He gives it an A. Uh, one of the most enjoyable episodes of Voyager for me. It combines some great sentiment, sentimentalism as Morris struggles to escape the anomaly. I also like to look at a possible future for NASA. Uh, when we finally get our, our ass, get your ass to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. That's a good movie. That's a good movie. Yeah. Get your ass to Mars. I love it. When, uh, when Morris realizes he won't survive, he hopes that someone can find and use the data he has discovered. I liked the burial at sea. Voyager doesn't uh, know if they will ever get back, so it's a way to give Kelly a fitting send-off. Okay. Uh, P.S. Everyone bet on the Yankees in 2013. <laughs> so Makai was, was on the other team, I guess. The London whatever. The London is something or others. Yo, dude, look who's here. Hey! Mark D with a C! Mark D is he. You there? He's here. You just can't speak for something. C, 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 C. Oh, I was on C, mute. C, 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 I boomered C, C. at the start. Hello, hello. Hi, beauty. everyone. Yep. Good, beauty. To What's up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see uh, everyone. So I was family night, and my you're going to sympathize with me. I had to watch a, a Tom Cruise movie with the... Yeah. Some of the kids are home, and they wanted to watch it, so uh, oh, pray for Lord. me. That's gross. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> oh, but I really wow. love this episode. I, I did love this last one with the, and I've been watching uh, for all mankind and for you trekkers out there. You might you might like the series. I mean, it's a lot of uh, mm -hmm. science and geek stuff and uh, NASA well, and rockets before, and. Yep. Well, wait before you continue. I just want to tell everybody, next week's episodes, folks. The Voyager conspiracy. Pathfinder, Boy, Fairhaven, and Blink of an Eye. Not Wink of an Eye, but Blink of an Eye. So it's a difference. So there you have it. I hope I'm getting those right. That's why I'm showing them now. So if oh, I got, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know how I screw, screw up sometimes and put the wrong ones up there? So, yeah, these are next week's episodes. So if I'm getting them out of order or whatever, you know. Uh, we'll check, so yep. All, all I do is I got to ask Katie. She knows the exact order, probably. We, I mean, we're, we're just doing like a normal like broadcast order. Aren't we? We're not doing any kind of prod order, are we? It's broadcast order. You're going pro broadcast. Yeah, order. yeah, it's fine. Well, we're doing we're doing the the uh, the broadcast order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The production cool. order has no impact here, but I, right, I yeah, believe yeah, that the fine. prod order. Well, it's more yeah. than it's more than belief. It's based on fact. I'm, that the prod would, order of for TOS yeah. is is vital to understanding. Right. TOS. Oh, absolutely. I was just checking on this. So yeah, I get you. No. Malachi. Malachi. Malachi D. Wildman, how are you, friend? Good, Good to, to see, see you, Malachi D. Wildman. I hope you're doing well. Always great to have you. So, uh, all right. Well, there we go. We got these um some pretty good timing there, don't you think? Not uh, bad, yeah. Yeah. Yes, because I had a long day at work. So yeah, the you fact that get, we uh, got in under three hours is just fabulous. 
all right we're, we're gonna go machine yeah well it was so did you have want to say anything before you got going or uh yeah i just want to say um thank you to everyone i want to thank all my patrons uh, for backing my book um, it means everything to me. I want to thank everyone in the chat tonight for their marvelous conversation. And I'm sorry that I've been scooting a lot lately, but I'm back working. And so I, I have to get up very early in the morning for work. That's fine. Um, otherwise, I would love to stay here and say sure. good night to each and every one of you. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your day to be a part of this mini Star Trek convention every week on Clobberin' Times. Uh, you guys made me laugh so hard tonight that I actually had to put it on mute. Um, it, I would just, I couldn't stop laughing. You guys are just so intelligent and so engaging. And I am so honored that you would fuss around with this horrible way of communicating the, these chat uh, uh, boxes to, to, to get across these amazing ideas and, and marvelous opinions and great friendships. So um, this is all about you. And I just want to thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I think that at the beginning of the show, I sent my love to all of the people who uh, truly matter. And uh, and so I hope you'll refer back to that um, and know that I love you and that you're in my heart. And I want to thank Mark uh, for everything that he does for us behind the scenes. And I just want to tell Quabby how much I love him. Quabby, I love you, sweetheart. Love you. I'm going to go and fall down dead in bed now. I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to Just floss. mostly dead. Mostly dead. Not all mostly dead, dead, please. Not not fully dead, but but I would say 99.99%. Right. Tuvok dead. Yeah, Tuvok dead. Yeah. Uh, I can always send you some nanoprobes. Dead. We'll send you some nanoprobes for the morning. Thank hey. you. Lazarus. Lazarus. Love you. Well, love, love you. you Thank you. And have a great night. And um, Take care. Good to see you. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see you again. Good night, everyone. I love night, you everybody. all. Here we go. Good night. Uh, and Katie and uh, everybody else, I think some other people are cutting out. Katie, thank you so much for being here, dear. Even if you did mention an Ewok, because, man, I don't like Ewoks, but I love you. You don't like Ewoks? So, yeah. You know, I hate Ewoks, but I <laughs> yeah. love you, Katie, in all seriousness. And thank you, Katie, for uh, being here with us. Love your reviews. Love your enthusiasm for Voyager. And you've all been fantastic. Before I continue, let me get this super chat. Wes Cagle, wow. my good friend, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, man. You're very, very generous and very kind. It says, um, let's just, just I avoided much, much of Voyager when it aired, but now that we're we're a fifth season, we're a fifth season into reviewing it. Wow, we're in the sixth, actually. I realized that Voyager is responsible for laying the foundation for much of new Trek crap. We now have doesn't help my dislike of it. Well, I don't know about that because I, I mean, I, it doesn't, uh, yeah, that's a tough one. That's an interesting argument. I mean, people, you're not the first one I've heard that from, incidentally, but nothing is more disgusting than new filth. Um, it's sort of, I could put it to you like this it takes place in the regular universe. So I can, no matter how bad something is within the confines of the normal universe, I can take it. This for, I'll give you an example. I'm a big Superman fan, right? When they make shitty Superman movies, it really aggravates me because they take when they make something that, that bastardizes the character, I really get upset. However, let's go to comic books. That's right. I'm gonna say I'm a fan of a character and I stop reading the comic because the stories are no good, but they don't at least at least they don't ruin the character. However, when they bastardize the character and ruin the character, yep. then I really get upset. In other words, I can say I can take a, a bad Superman comic. I don't mind a bad a bad issue or here and there, but it's when you everything about the character's been ruined. But anyway, that's another we won't go through yeah, yeah. that rabbit hole. But okay, well, I tell you what, oh, my oh, friend, just I just want to mention something really quick. Sorry, to, uh, did anyone mention that Phil Morris was in Miri? He was the kid with the uh, the the astron. He was the kid with the army helmet in the episode Miri. No. So he's, you know, if you, you know, is that, well, there's a picture, you know, if you click on the Good night, R. page. See you later, R. Good to see you. So, yeah. So he was actually in uh, a cadet in Star Trek three search for Spock, a Klingon That's bodyguard right. in DS nine. And, uh, and then he was a Geminar soldier, but that, that shot That's in Miri right. where he's the young, the young kid with the army helmet in Miri. So he's been awesome. on the original series. 
He's been yep. in Star Trek three. Yeah. I remember DS9. those two. He's been on DS9 twice. And, yep. and twice and Voyager. If only he'd been on TNG, he could say he'd been on every single. I don't think he's been on right? TNG. Imagine that if you could do that. <laughs> yeah. Good night, Max. Yeah. Pretty amazing, yep, yep. Good night, Max. Good to see you, Take care, Max, yep. And the other uh, thing that uh, Beltran really hated this episode because originally uh, he was going to have a you know much more character development and they uh, turned it all over to uh, Seven, Seven of Nine's character. So <laughs> so they, all, man, they did that to everybody, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, point, everything went to Seven, yeah, yeah. So it was not, not happy. Wow. But, uh, but yeah, you look at the, when you look at the picture of uh, Miri, uh, you know, where he's in Miri, and it's like, oh, God, that is the kid. That's the kid with the... I forgot about that. Well, here, let me show well, it. Yeah. Like two seconds. He was, he was Greg Morris's son, and Greg Morris was working for Desi, yeah. Lee, working on um on Mission Impossible. Well, he had to be young. Yeah, he's young, and yeah. And he's, he's a he's young, but he's a great actor in the show, yeah. So he's got to be, he's around, the... that was 1966 or seven. so he's right. older than me. Wow, Greg, and Phil Morris is older. So boy in army helmet. Yep. Wasn't Phil Morris a lieutenant in generation, says Tetrarch. Uh it doesn't say here. Let's see. Cadet Foster and and search for Spock. I don't know if uh how many people who have been on uh the original series have been on that many other treks? There's some guys like, for example, have been on multiple and played multiple. I mean, Garrett, for example, you know, was it a uh, Jeffrey Combs has played a lot of Star Trek characters. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't go back as far to the original series like Philip Morris does. Well, you had Clint Howard, wasn't Clint Howard on? Uh, Clint Howard, of course, was he was on. He was on original Trek. But and was he on he any on, of the other ones? Wasn't he in something on TNG? Did he do anything else or in Star Trek? I'm trying. To, I thought he. Uh, I thought he might have. Uh, I don't. I don't. But you know, yeah. my, I don't trust my memory very much. But uh, maybe it was just Baylock. Hmm. I guess I'm trying to think of who else. You know, because someone who was young like that then could have appeared. I'm not sure. Could have appeared later. So, uh, oh no, he was on DS9. That's right. That's good night, Philip. Philip Story. Good night. He was a Jim and Dar, right? He was a he was a Klingon. Grady. He was a Klingon and a Jim and Dar on oh, no. there. No, I'm saying that Clint Howard. He was at Baylock. He was Grady in DS9. He was a Ferengi and Enterprise acquisition. Oh, that's right. He was an Enterprise. Oh, and he was on the stuff that doesn't count. He was also on Disgracery and Strange Nude Worms. Was he really? Oh, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm mad at him now. <laughs> yeah. Clint I Howard, how could you? How could you? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, if he did, and he didn't do it for the money. It's not like they pay anything. Yeah. Clint. Dude, man, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Crap. So anyway, yeah, that's man. Look, so this is he's been on just about. If they just made it, if he just made an appearance on a TNG, he'd be able to say, "I was ever on every live action to Star Trek." Yep. That's still that's pretty impressive though. Well, not everyone, not well, Enterprise. Enterprise he'd made he'd have been on TNG and Enterprise. That'd have been unreal. Man. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what are you gonna cool do? Cool stuff. Yep. Very cool. <laughs> And uh, his pappy was on Mission Impossible, so Greg Morris. That's right, yeah, yeah. And that's what I watched boom, tonight. Boom, Mission boom, Impossible. Boom. You well, did three no, hours. No, yeah, yeah. no, you didn't. You watched the movie with Tom Cruise in it. That's not Mission Impossible. <laughs> All boom, right. boom, 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 boom. A TV show. There's only one Mission Impossible, and that had Martin Landau and Bob Rabain and and Peter Graves and Leonard Nimoy and Greg Morris, Peter Lupus. <laughs> Uh, those are the guys that were on Mission Impossible, not Tom Screws. <laughs> I have a special theme. I have actually words to that theme for the Tom Cruise movie. Tom, do, yeah. I can't say it. Be though. careful. You might get in trouble. It. Yep. it has the word Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tom Be very Cruise. careful. Mm, 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 mm. I can't do it. I almost did it by accident. <laughs> Ah, yeah, I love the sheet TV show. It's such a good show to make it into a. I mean, what an insult to turn that into dopey, mindless action drivel movies. But Haley Atwell was in it, though. I don't care. <laughs> she was, yeah, she was on Agent Carter, and that show was bad. But she's great to look at. So what? You said that, not me. 
<laughs> yeah, that's Audrey, Audrey Carter was a garbage show. I mean, I loved her in, in uh, when she was in uh, First Avenger, though. She was great. And yep. she was she was still fantastic to look at on Agent Carter. The stories were dumb. Uh, it says, anytime Clavin Times has to watch Tom Cruise movie, it's a Mission Impossible. Yeah, because I won't watch one. <laughs> now, there were people would be, uh, when I worked at, I had, um, a number of years ago, I was always the go-to geek at this plan I'd worked at where hundreds of people there. And they'd always walk up to me to ask me questions about movies here and there. And they found yep. out that I hate Tom Cruise and won't, go, won't watch a Tom Cruise movie. But they still like to walk up saying, there'll be some new stupid Tom Cruise movie, right? And they'll come up and they say, hey, did you see this new Tom Cruise movie? And I'd say, who's in it again? they say, say, um, what do you mean? Tom? I said, who's in it again? What's it, Tom Cruise? Who's in it again? And finally, go, oh, yeah, you didn't watch it. Oh, yeah. yeah Thank you. Right? Exactly. <laughs> if, you, you, if you don't have to ask, this will save you the time. You won't have to ask the question. If he's in it, you'll know the answer. If You won't have to say, hey, did you see, oh, he's in it. No, you didn't. Thank you. Tetrarch says, um, in the short-lived Mission Impossible TV series reboot, Peter Graves, um, yeah, that was actually the Mission Impossible of the 80s, the short-lived remake, that was pretty good. Peter Graves was on it, and so was Phil Morris. He played Barney's son. That's exactly right. That was a good show. It didn't last. I wish it would last longer. You ever see that one? You never watched the No, nah, I never watched one. Oh, yeah, I watched Mission Impossible. I mean, not, okay. not the whole thing through, but... The I, 80s remake was there. okay, but I mean, not remake. It was a sequel. It was a continuation. Sequel, huh? Not a sequel, well, a continuation. But yeah, wasn't. Yeah, it? yeah. Well, a sequel is a continuation, right? I mean, um, I not actually. Lisa, there are a couple of them. I'll tell you who's on my my list, my avoid list, and it's a big list. So I'll just give you a couple. Tom Jane Screws Fonda? is in it. If Tom Tom Screws is in it, I won't watch it. What? Jane Fonda. Well, she may as well put her on there. Yeah. Um, George Clooney's in it. I won't watch it. I made the exception for Batman and Robin, and it was so bad. I wish I hadn't, but it was called it was a, it was a t Batman in the title. So yeah. But other than that, if George Clooney's in it, ain't watching it. There's another one that shocks people, and they get mad at me for it. If Leonardo DiCaprio's in it, ain't watching it. Now, I got forced to go on a blind date to to Titanic when it came out. Blind date is defined as you wish you were blind on the date. Sorry. But uh, yeah, I think they're those are the only ones. Uh, I think those are the only ones. Um, I would never watch other, the Infonda movie. You know? There are other people I don't like that I'm not a fan yeah. of. But as far as like, if I might, I don't go out of my way to watch their movie. Uh, Mar says, "Um, you like you know? I think I actually did see on tape, um, Tropic Thunder." But he's not starring in that. He's just he's got not that the cameo. star of it. I think um, I think I watched it uh, but I can't really remember. I mean, I, no, you I probably fast forwarded didn't. that part. I probably didn't watch that. Now that I remember it, that it movie ain't getting made today. <laughs> Lisa, most people like the Caprio. I just can't stand him. I don't know. I mean, Sabina, uh, look, I'll tell you what. That said, I'm gonna watch one day. I'm gonna watch um. Uh, what's it? Once upon a time in Hollywood. I've been meaning to watch that. That's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, Bubba, you've been. Oh, I know. am I the only? I'm not the only one there, uh? Bubba. There you go. But Tom. A lot Cruise, of people are married at the uh, at treatment of uh, right. Bruce Lee, though. Bruce Lee gets beaten up in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and the family wasn't too happy. <laughs> but I've seen two Tom Cruise movies. Um, I've seen Risky Business. It's a funny movie, you know. Whatever. I've seen Taps. That's not a Tom Cruise movie, but he's in it. You know. But George oh. C. Scott. No. Uh, yeah, he's in Perhaps, yeah, George, George e. Scott. Scott. Yeah. yeah, and Timothy yeah, Hutton. Yeah. Timothy Hutton. That's a great movie. That's a really good yeah. movie. Yeah. Hey, Putin's yeah. cat. What's up, Putin's cat? How you doing? Hey, Putin's cat. Um. So yeah, there's a, what is it? What else did I see? That I but usually no. There's somebody else. There are a couple I don't like, but I'll still. Watch. I've seen some of their movies. Um. Wes Cagle says a Greek clubby. I usually avoid Tom Cruise movies, also Leo films. Nick Cage in a film is a no go as well, exception of being kick ass. I kind of, I kind of have a soft spot for uh, Con Air, as stupid as it is. <laughs> Con Air is good. That's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> we had a fun time on Toxic Tuesday yeah. with that one. I didn't like Face Off too. 
I was about to say that. I didn't. I don't like John Revolta <laughs> either. Yeah, face off. Of course, they they switch faces, but no one else. No one their else. Bodies notices don't change. They, yeah, their bodies don't. We were talking about that. What happens uh, when they're with their wives? They're yeah. nowhere near the same <laughs> size. Yeah, that's so stupid. It was so stupid. I mean, I'm, I couldn't. I can't stand that movie. I went to the theater. It was. It's theater. just you laugh at it. It's just. It's a fun, like crazy laugh at. But it I kind of like Nicholas Cage. He's just. I mean, I love him in Over the raising, raising Arizona. Yep. We won't mention Ghost Rider. No, Ghost Rider was really ridiculous. Or what's Ghost the movie Rider. when he's scr- oh, the uh, the uh, Wicker Man when he dies oh, in the no. Wicker Man? <laughs> but what I really love is when Tom does his his Tom Cruise impersonation. <laughs> if you haven't heard Tom Connors, Tom uh, his, not Tom Cruise, his, his Nicholas Cage impersonation, it's it's amazing. <laughs> Tom does a great uh, Nicholas Cage. He probably did not it on. Tom. He, yeah, he did a toxic food. Does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, another one. You know, the, who's another one I can't stand? Uh, oh, there. Well, there are a few, but I mean, eh. so you know, I used to not like. I used to not like Brad Armpit that very much, but I, was, I mean, he's good in some movies. But I mean, you know, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all right, but I just don't really. I never. There was a while where I got I had this thing when I was younger. I didn't like the pretty boy types that were just there. That they were just like they were there because the chicks liked them and they were getting the roles for it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That said, there are some of those guys still. Some of them are great actors. You know, oh, Brad Pitt's a good actor. Yeah, he's he's good. Yeah, yeah he's all right. I mean, you know, he was kind of funny in Fight Club. Fight Club, no, he's good. Hey, look, Fight I've Club, seen. Yeah. Oh, look, J P R P H one is there. I've, I've not seen you in a dog's age. What's up, my friend? Uh, good to see you. Yeah. I hope you're doing well. Yep. Hey, we do not talk about Fight Club, Jill. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Love Fight Club, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, who are we? Where are we at? Where are we at? So anyway, yeah, let's um let's do some showy noties. Unless you got anything to show us. Well, now do I have any Star Trek enabling? En- I don't think enabling? I'll check. I'll ch- let me check my list there. Okay. Keep an enabling list, but uh, I'll just say of course we're gonna have Sunday night geekery. And we'll probably be talking a little. There'll be a little fallout on that on that show. I don't know if you've had a chance. Watch to. it. No, I don't watch it. I watched a little bit of it. It's uh, it's pretty. And I started playing the first game again. The game came out in 1997, which shouldn't be that long ago, but it is now. Uh, so I think it was played. 97, the first game. Yeah. So, uh, it's uh, it's a classic. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. I think most people are liking it so far, but uh, I've only gotten through the first uh, first episode. So. That's more of the primer for the series, but there's a long episode. It was an hour and fifteen minutes. It's, it's basically a mini movie to start the start the series. So we're talking that, and maybe yeah. a little bit of food. What about, about X Men? And oh, I got to watch X Men tomorrow too. Yep, I, I haven't watched. I'm gonna on watch X-Men? the first three. I'm not caught up. I only watched the first three episodes, so I better well, watch. Uh, you get watch caught up. We talk about it. I saw three yep. episodes, but it's one of those series where you have to watch all three. All the episodes to get those. She's talking about Fallout. Is that Fallout you mean, Joe? Fallout, Joe's saying, yep. I think she means Fallout because you were talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I guess it's set after the video games, is my understanding. So it's not telling the story of the game. So, yes, Fallout. Yeah. She said. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not played the game before and I haven't seen the show. So I would only probably don't even have access to it. Not that I would watch it anyway. Well, you but might have access to I'm it. I'm hoping fans, I mean, I'm talking about, I don't know what services on what I mean. I don't know how it's normally streamed. It's on um, Amazon Prime. Oh, I do have that. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, we can. Uh, anyway, well, yeah, we'll, I mean, I'm, I, you could you can definitely talk about that. I'm sure somebody will want to talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the Sikikini, folks. The great Mark D with the Seas channel tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern. In your weekend geek. Thank you. Like, geek it out with us on the Sunday night geekery. And oh, and I, I and thanks to everyone. I was sorry to interrupt. I would say thank you to everyone because I hit my four thousand watch hours. So nice. to everyone who watched the show. So I'm I monetize so my my videos that get to not. To, I appreciate all the views, but you know I I don't think you get much more uh, from that unless you know one of the big channels getting you like thousands and thousands of views. But uh, a lot of my uh, my geekeries got uh, said uh, you know not suitable for advertisers. I'm like my show is pretty milk toast and mild it's like how the heck could i get uh you know limited i was I'm like what's going on with this algorithm but anyway the, you know it doesn't matter but uh, i was kind of laughing at it i was like 
you know, maybe it's playing that uh, the dad man uh, thing all the time gets it knocked out with the advertisers, but it was funny. But uh, thank you everyone who's watched and subbed. Uh, much appreciated. So I did finally finally hit the thousand subs and four thousand watch hours. So thank you everyone. Gotcha. Jill says I'm not even going to bother monetizing my live streams. Really? I didn't. You don't do that? Oh, okay. Hmm. I didn't know you didn't do that. Okay. Oh, uh, JT oh. Kirk saying the algorithm thinks clam pizza is, <laughs> is bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's been punishing you for it. Okay, well, here we go with the uh, some show notes, folks, and some shout-outs after that. Um, we've got, the, again, the geekery. Uh, Monday night, I'll be on with J-Man again uh, and Sean on J-Man's channel, 7 p.m. Eastern. We're continuing our uh, Legion of Superheroes reviews. From eight, 58 to 89, so bronze through silver, excuse me, silver through bronze, sorry. Uh, having a great time doing that. I and mean, what a time to be a be a comics fan for us, being able to review that on Monday nights and then on Friday nights, reviewing Fantastic Four. We're having a great time on Fantastic Fridays as well. But in the meantime, after that, I'll be on my channel at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on Monday Night Mark C Comics Talk. And uh, Wednesday night. As well, 9 p.m. Central. I'll be here hanging with you, and then we got a clubhouse Thursday night. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, club and house in it with Raquel and Mark. Our Blake Seven review, Colchak review, and Star Trek Unlimited comic review. And um, and then again, like I said, on Friday nights, Fantastic Fridays on J Man's channel seven Eastern, and then 8 30. I uh, usually hang out with Nick Weiser and the Friday night comic shop boys. Always great fun. It's pretty soon, coming up soon, of course. I uh, I will rank every Star Trek episode of Star Trek, the original series. Maybe I'll do it in a video. Maybe I'll do it in a uh, um, and stuff. Maybe I'll do it in Sounds a video, good. or maybe I'll just do it on live stream. I don't know. And then, of course. Saturday night, Saturday night Star Trek next week, folks. Four more episodes right here. The same Trek time, same clavy channel, always starting at 9 p.m. Central. Um, and of course, Tuesdays and Thursday nights of the great Midnight's Edge After Dark, the great Tom Connors channel, and sometimes on Wednesday nights, Loki's channel, 7 p.m. Eastern. I mean, 17 Central for the comic book round table. I want to thank you all. Clobby scale. I don't know what that means, uh, Putin. But uh, thank you, uh, oh, Jill. The rating scale, maybe I guess. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, Clobby scale. Well, I'm going to rank them in or, uh, all 79 episodes. You know, and I'll, I'll even mention what I'll mention the um. I'll mention. I'll uh, give them a ranking as well from on the. It's it's a, uh, eleven. It's one. It's zero to eleven. <laughs> Um, Dr. Coffin Nails, what's up? Well, we review Star Trek every night on Saturday nights at Saturday Night Star Trek, but right now we're uh, about to, to mosey on out of here because we've been on for a while. Nevertheless, it is good to see you, and I hope you're doing well. Welcome to Clobber Times. Always good to see you. All right, so uh, let's see. Where were we? All right. Let me do some um, shout-outs now, folks. Shout-out our wrenches, and I'll shout-out our... Uh, our good friends in the chat. The great bronze wrencher, Eric K, who I believe is in Vegas now. The big, the big uh, nerd erotic meetup out nice. there. So I hope Eric and having a great time with our, with our good buddy, Gary from nerd erotic. I hope they're doing, he's doing well out there. And then of course he had to run, I believe, but the great Chris Persia vindicated wrench of the great night white North. I hope your father's doing well. Thanks for all you do, buddy. Good luck to your yeah. father, man. D Bud Martin, the wrench of Iron. Lord Thoth, God of the wrenches, Avon lives long live the Legion. J Man, the wrench without Fia. Maddie's daddy, got to be seeing him next week. Kal El, the super wrench. Fanti Outsidery. Maximum Redstone and Larry, Larry, Larry. All right. And now, let me give everybody a shout out for being here. <laughs> Obviously, the great Mark D with a C. Thanks for being here, dude. Appreciate Thank you. you. Great time. Our, our communications officer, Jill, anti-derivative Jill. Thank you. 
Thanks for being here, Jill. Um, let's see. Er, 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 er. All right. Let's see. Bubba Doom one. Uh, shooter. FKH two thousand five ten. Apollo meets Minion in the Pupper. Classic comics. Uh, uh, uh. Me and the my monkey. Raymond and Sandra Feliciano. RRT and Z. JT Kirk. Penny. Buzz Monkey Max. MMM. Uh, the Time Scales. Lisa. Enigmatic Drop Bear. Gwagnar. Princess Fiona. The Tetrarch of Apathy. Rob Altus. Katie. Uh, Zathras. Hey, by the way, uh, good luck to your father. Hey, Enigmatic Drop Bear, thanks for being here, buddy. It's always great to have yep. you. We really appreciate your reviews. We appreciate all your reviews, of course. Parker Luck. Grim. Davina Duckworth was here. Davina, great to see you. Here. Awesome. Uh, yes, indeed. Nathan Hawk. Wes Cagle. Thank you so much for all you do, buddy. Appreciate you. Um, Nemesis. Well done. Good to see you, Cap. They're not an Aximander Bear. SP4H. Brogu from my old hometown. Uh, common peoples. Uh, thank you, simply Steve. You old rascal, you. Star Blazing Wolverine. What a name. Love that name. Uh, Andy Masterson popped in. All right, buddy. Thank you. Um, Professor R2. Good to see you. Sean Cutter from Mars. Um, Adega Outlaw. Dad Man and the Dad Man Clan. Michael Beacom, shout out to Cassandra and you both, buddy. Good to see you, man. Looks good. Thank you. We'll see. Uh, Cinema Gulp. Touring Machine. Joe Dog, buddy. Bruce Lombardo, buddy. Philip Story. Malachi D. Wildman. Putin's Cat. Uh... J P R P one H one and Dr. Coffin Nails. Oh, great to see you all here with me. Hope I didn't miss anybody. I want to thank you all for being here with us tonight for another fun time on Saturday night Star Trek. What a great time it has been, and it's all because of you all. So thank you so much. Again, big shout out to our wonderful, wonderful, beautiful Raquel Briggs, our first officer. We love you. And uh, she had to run. But she was wonderful, as always, and as all of you were as well. Take care, Lisa. Good to see you. Good to see you all. Oh, Wes Cagle. Wes Thank Cagle. you for that. Yep. Oh, I'm glad I caught it before I got out of here. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gwagnar, by the way. I like that meme you did of Alice. That was hilarious. I should have shown that. I forgot all about it. I'm sorry. Um, Wes says, have a good night, uh, my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Wes. And Bruce, thank you for the super chat, buddy. You're too kind. He says, Get yourself something nice to drink for a morning wake up, good sir. Well, I I will, and I'm thinking you of it, buddy. Thank you, thank you so much. And let's see, before we get out of here with credits, you all deserve something. Uh, some uh, some uh, videos. So let's give you some. Superman. You don't want any toast, then? No. What about a muffin? Nothing. Inconceivable. 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 Inconceivable! You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Sorry. As good as your word. Aye, right, sir. The more they overthink the plumbing, the easier it is to stop up the drain. It is green. No bloody A, B, C, or D. And they probably redesigned the whole sick bay, too. I know engineers, they love to change things. Cass, super Cass. Brain and brain, what is brain? Everything that guy just said is bullshit. Thank you. Get those nerds! 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 What?
You have to set an example even in the face of stupidity. Now, everybody that reads comic books knows that Kirby Silver Surfer is the only true Silver Surfer. You're a dumbass. Well, a double dumbass on you. All right, everybody. Take care. Have a great night. Get some. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Groovy. I just love clobbering time.